Alright, hello and welcome everybody. If you're just joining me, then welcome aboard. This is Team Wars Season 10, Week 3. And if you're back from the last war, then hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Uh, I'm Diatonic, and I am hosting today's matchup between the reigning, defending, undisputed heavyweight champions of Season 9, D-Fusion, as they take on a relative newcomer squad in uh, the Legends, TL. And uh, we are just about ready to get underway. They are uh, taking their places. And uh, we should be good to go here in just a second. I'm going to swap the audio over real quick before we jump in there. And uh, so, yeah, if you've never seen this before, then welcome to Team Wars. This is uh, week number three of competition, so we got a, we got a long way to go. But uh, we've already seen some pretty impressive matchups so far. Um, this is actually my second match of the day. It's a double header. So last match had a ton of uh, Cyber Dragon plays in it. Hopefully going to see something similar this time. But uh, we have uh, D-Fusion, uh, who were the champions of last season of Team Wars, and I was fortunate enough to be able to cast their Grand Finals. And uh, the Legends, who are new to Team Wars, this is their first season. Uh, they are still looking for a win so far, 0-2, versus D-Fusion's 2-0. So they are on the warpath, unsurprisingly, continuing momentum from uh, their last season victory. So uh, we have Jono from Defusion on the blue side and Eric's from the Legends on the red side. They're flipped. Hold on. Wait a second. Let me do this real quick. And that should fix it. There we go. All right. So now they're on the right sides, at least in your top right of the screen. Uh, so it looks like uh, it looks like Defusion is going for Gaia straight away. Versus uh, potentially Harpies. Uh, could also be a, a, a Trimid deck. You never really know. It's hard to tell with my, but we did see Harpies uh, last war, so I'm uh, I'm betting it's probably going to be Harpies again. But uh, if you're a fan of, uh, of Fusion, then uh, you, you're, you're in luck because we're going to get to see some Gaia. Um, we did uh, Gaia was pretty impactful in the last war I saw. Um, did not come anywhere near what uh, Cyber Dragon was able to accomplish in that war, but... Uh, all right, so Jono's turn is basically going to be a uh, Magical Knight of Dragons two-back row pass. And uh, Eric's drops a Book of Moon on the Gaia immediately. And uh, it is, in fact, Harpies. It is not uh, Triamid. I've yet to see Triamid in Team Wars this season, I believe. I don't know. I cast for a lot, <laughs> a lot of leagues. Team Wars isn't my only uh, isn't my only jam. So it's hard to remember what I've seen where. But, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe not the best spot to start out in. You know, you lose your monster that can destroy things. Obviously, Jono just popping off the destruction. So, could be Trimid or Harpy. Yeah, uh, so a lot of Trimid decks use Harpy's Hunting Ground because uh, extra field spells for fuel for their abilities. So, yeah, there are a lot of uh, a lot of Trimids that run Harpy's Hunting Ground. Oh, let's go. We got a TTH already. <laughs> All right, Treasure's Trap Hole to blow up the Harpies, and uh, that will pretty much end Eric's turn. So, yes, uh, after winning last season, uh, Defusion has a, has a long history of success in, uh, in Team Wars. Uh, they actually debuted back in Season 7, from what I could gather, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but ever since their debut, they have made it into playoffs every season. In Season 7, 8, and then of course 9, when they finally earned the, the championship. So, yeah, um... They have a lot of success. It's they're a very very strong squad with a lot of very very good players, and uh, yeah, it's a hard matchup. I've noticed that uh, we have a few new teams in the league this season, and uh, I noticed that they've all had some really tough matchups. They've gone against the veteran teams that have been here for a long time. You know, we just watched a match between uh, Sensei and Last Killer uh, this morning. Um, and Sensei has a season under their belt, but they also made it into playoffs. So, yeah, um, a lot of the new teams 
are having a very uphill battle right off the bat in this uh, in this tenth season. Team Wars hitting double digits, big uh, big ups to the to the staff that makes this thing happen. You know the the referees and the admins and uh, and the streamers, Mister Streamer. <coughs> oh, he hits the Book of Moon. Nice. Let's see how Magical Knight of Dragons. You can reduce his attack by twenty six hundred and blow up one of your opponent's cards. So blow up the one that's there. Won the match earlier today. Uh, Sensei won that match. Uh, it was, uh, I believe, uh, 10 to 8. So a very, very close match. It really came down to it. Last Killer had the lead for quite a while. It was a, it was a really solid match with a lot of a lot of good moments. There's a there's a vod of it. I do recommend it. It it was a, it was a really fun one. All right. So a gateway to chaos, letting uh, Jano search for some kind of Gaia. So he goes for Magical Knight, summons Curse of Dragonfire, and we're ready to fuse again. So we're already going back into another Magical Knight of Dragons. More destruction. Um, alternatively, whenever he destroys a monster, he can actually gain 2600 attack. So he gets huge really fast. Um, and yeah, that is uh, that is that is it. It's back over to Eric's with uh, with three cards and not much in the graveyard. Nothing he can really work with. Uh, so team war rules. Uh, every duelist brings two, deck, two decks to the war. Uh, when you lose, you have to swap decks. Um, and each team gets two replays. So if you lose, you can opt to use a replay, play the same deck again. That's pretty much it. Last team standing wins. So yeah, it's all about it's all about win streaks, really. But it's a lot different from others like Clan Wars, where everything happens all at once, and it's just a matter of looking at the stats at the end. Um, so in a Team Wars match, you can be down nine to zero. And your last duelist comes up and is like, alright, I'm just going to win all 10 duels now. And you can just come back. So, it's it's very possible. There, there's I I saw last season there were a couple of absolutely insane sweeps. And Eryx drops a Cyber Harpy Lady and passes? That's it! Oh no. Oh, and Jono's going to use Book of Moon to reset the Magical Knight of Dragons attack. And that's game! That is it! Defusion takes the lead right away. A quick victory for Gaia. And uh, Eryx's Harpies go down. Clipped their wings, as they say. So that's a real quick game one for Jono. Yeah, um... You know, like I, like I said, the, the the these new squads that are just joining the league, they get kind of the welcome wagon of, hey, here's all these former champions and multi-playoff uh, qualifying teams, and now you get to fight them right away. <laughs> So in some ways it's rough, you know. You start off and you're gonna, you're gonna take, uh, you're gonna take lumps, but uh, in the same token, you learn real fast that way. Because you know when when you're, I talked about this in the in the the other war that I uh, hosted today, but when you when you're a new team and you're coming into something like Team Wars, you know the meta game that Duel Links is in still applies pretty similarly to how it does in something like like MCS or uh, or Battle Phase or any of the other solo tournaments. Um, it's just, there are some differences. Some people do play things a little differently. There are some techs and things that you don't normally see in those kind of tournaments in Team Wars. Um, so the question that I always have when I watch a new squad when they're debuting is, have they done their homework? Have they watched matches before? Have they played in other team leagues? You know, do, do, are they going to bring something crazy to the table that people don't normally expect and don't play? Or are they going to fit right in, you know, Onomats and, and TDs and Harpies and things like that? And so far, the new squads I've seen have all fit in pretty well. Um, but you never know. There's always that kind of uh, wild card factor. And I believe we're going to get to see a mirror match here. Um, DSOD Yugi, I really only know Gaia with him. Which, honestly, uh, I feel you, Eriks. I, I play Gaia on, on the same one because I love the theme. So I do believe we have a mirror. I I don't know. I could be you know you never know. Again, wild card factor. Yeah, TG is uh, TG is a meta deck as well. They're uh, they're tier three right now. Oh, worm, we're setting back row. We got all the back row. All right. Cannot confirm. Eric is just gonna set three in the back row and pass. So not a hundred percent sure if it's Gaia yet, but. Jono opens with Gateway to Chaos, so we're searching for a Gaia. Now he can use the uh, the Dragonite's Path, search for the dragon if he didn't get it. I mean, 
Gaia is an insanely consistent deck, and again, it's it's these new skills, like this, I don't know, really only since like 2020 slash 2021, that we'd be getting these strong archetypal skills that really help specific decks as long as you abide by their deck building restrictions and yada yada yada. But it makes them super consistent, and it feels more like a back and forth, it feels more like a fighting game rather than like a, whoop, I hope I don't brick. It's like, that happens. But it feels like you get what you need, and it's more about, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with your opponent's deck. Rather than like, boy, I hope I draw into these cards. It doesn't it doesn't feel like that too much. These days, at least. Alright, Galloping Guy is up, so now we're uh, we're searching for a dragon. Got a Curse of Dragonfire, got a Guy of the Magical Knight, everything he needs to start fusing. The only question is, can he get through the back row? Hmm... Alright, let's go. We got a Forbidden Chalice immediately, uh, negating the effects, and a Book of Moon in response. Flip the uh, the Magical Knight down with the Book of Moon. I've seen a lot more Book of Moon defensively these days. A lot more, hey, I'm going to protect my own monster from whatever you want to do. And uh, he'll still get to activate the effect because he booked it down. Oh, and Eric has a Kanadia too, using everything he can to try and lock Jono down. Imagine using consistency skills. Same. Uh, what was Eric's first deck? Uh, it was Harpies. Yeah, Harpy was up first. Alright, it's back over to Eric's. Hey, there we go. It is Gaia. <laughs> we still hadn't confirmed that, by the way. Alright, so Dragon Knight's Path. Uh, he'll get to play Galloping Gaia. All that good stuff. You know, let's go. Says the Photon player. I mean, Photon is is nutty consistent even without a skill that sets it up. You know, you have uh, you have Photon Lizard. You've got Photon Orbital now. I play Photons in the TCG, and they're pretty insanely consistent. Strength wise, meh. Uh, why is a team that's 2-0 facing a team's own two? Uh, it's not Swiss pairing. Yeah, they don't. They don't. It's not a. It's not a a Swiss style tournament. So yeah, you may or may not go up against teams of similar records, because the earlier war was between a 2-0 team and a 1-1 team. So, it's n it's not exactly round robin, because there's 32 teams, and we don't have time to do 31 rounds. Um, but yeah, it's it's more, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of round robin-ish. Yes, there are, there are divisions. There are divisions within Team Wars. And that's how they determine things like, you know, who goes to playoffs and that kind of thing. It's like, it's like regular sports. Stuff like that. Oh, Eric's doesn't have anything on the board? He is wide open. And you already know that Jono's got enough to fuse with. And more than enough to, more than enough to kill. Imagine not having Dark World? Bruh. Bruh. Yeah. Yeah, think of it like any other any other divisional thing like in sports. You compete within that division and then playoffs are where you break out. Alright, we're going for lethal and there's nothing Eric's can do and Jono goes up 2-0. A quick first KO for Defusion. The, uh, the defending champs come out swinging strong and that doesn't surprise me because they have been winning for a while now they won grand finals then they've won two matches since then so yeah there's uh whew, they're uh, they're uh on the war path as uh, as you might say <laughs> so yeah um like i mentioned you know they've uh, ever since they debuted they've been qualifying in the playoffs and have been consistently competitive and consistently successful so I, I really do think that uh, that TL has their work cut out for them in this match. It's uh, it, the 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 hill they have to climb is very obvious. It's just that that's a lot of hiking. So, <laughs> graph a best card ever created. <laughs> Three weeks to go. Yeah, uh, we're we're on the we're on the cusp of uh, of a new summoning mechanic getting added to the game uh, because pendulums are are coming this month. Uh, I would assume that that's going to happen after the cross-duel beta takes place, because I don't 
I don't think I don't think they're gonna update Duel Links while they're trying to you know get people hyped for this new game that's coming out. So yeah, we're still a few a few weeks off, but uh, pen best deck, let's go, baby. I'm curious to see what kind of impact that's gonna have on the league since we'll be in the middle of the season. And you know, I've I've been through new new releases and new meta decks coming into Team Wars. I have never been a part of Team Wars when a new summoning mechanic releases. I have only been a part of this since the Xyz era, so I'm really curious what this is gonna look like. Hey, Demalius, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Um, yeah, I'm really curious how, what things are gonna look like. I know people are concerned because as it stands or as it appears. Uh, the left and right spell and trap card slots are also the pendulum zones. That doesn't leave much room for, you know, back row plays, but... Hey, what's up, Eric? Thanks for the follow, dude. GG's, my guy. Again, you know, you can't you can't fault TL too much because they're... This is, this is a, a rough matchup. On, just on paper, you know, pound for pound, D-Fusion has so much experience under their belts, so... Hey, and T and Priest, thanks for the follow as well. I, I try to hit everybody's notifications. If it happens in the middle of a match, I may miss it, but I will do my best. So, yeah, uh, in Team Wars, like I said, you bring two decks to the table. When you lose both of those, you're out, and one of your teammates has to come up in your place. So right now, we're just waiting on Legends to send up one of their uh, surviving players. And uh, King Crab, thanks for the follow. Hello. He needs back row, and you have negates. Well, this is uh, this is Duel Links. This isn't uh, this isn't Drytron. <laughs> we don't we don't have that level. Of, we have like one negate at a time. So it looks like TL is gonna send up Bellator. Which, by the way, if I mispronounce your name, please feel free to bully me in chat. It's it's all good. Follow or name in game. I'll screw it up. I can't pronounce half of freaking Yu-Gi-Oh cards, let alone <laughs> let alone people's usernames. So. So yeah, when you when you get KO'd, uh, you do have some advantage because now you get to pick specifically what deck you want to go up against what is surviving. Because as long as Jono keeps winning, he's gonna keep playing Gaia. So if you if you pull out something that's great against Gaia, you know that's fine. You win against Gaia, but then whatever wins has to stay. So if you play Ultimate Gaia Counter 5000, but it's not that great of a deck on its own, then it's kind of like, well, you, you kind of kamikaze it. You stopped one of their decks, but now you got to win more matches. Drytron is coming next box confirmed. Ah, yes! With all of those Link summons we have. Eggs, the... Pendulum can set up five negates every single turn. Pen, pen. I don't know. Based on the, the power level of Xyz monsters and Duel Links, I don't think we're going to be getting some of those Pendulums. But I am curious to see what it's going to look like. Anyway, uh, hey, if you wanted your meta fix for the day, we have uh, we have some Onomats coming up. To the, I can't say that, okay? I I called Onomats at the start of a duel last time, and it turned out to be Lord Evil Eye. <laughs> so... I'm going to unfollow and refollow. All right, bet. I don't know if it'll do it. <laughs> it may not. All right, so Jono's on the play here against Bellator on the red side for TL. Uh, looking for their first win in this war, but, you know, we're only on game three. There's still there's still a lot of Duel Links left. So, yeah, Jono's just going to go straight into Dragon Knight's path. Let's go. Evil Automats. It was kind of crazy. I was like, hey, Automat. And then he dropped uh, Paradolia, the field spell. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> There was a lot of crazy stuff in that last match. There was a there was a five game win streak with Cyber Dragons that involved Drowning Mirror Force that didn't show up for like the first three or four duels. And I was like, wow, I didn't know Drowning was in that deck at all. <laughs> all right, so uh, Galloping Guy's effect to add the Magical Knight. Uh, you know the drill now. Normal summon the Knight, special summon the Dragon Fire. Fuse them together. Where's the rest of my guy's support? <laughs> Where's uh, where's Spiral Fusion? Where's uh, Curse uh, Curse of Dragon, the Cursed Dragon, which is just an, an amazing name, by the way. And a uh, couple back row and a pass. Pretty pretty. Jono's gone for this board a couple times now. We've seen we've seen a couple. So, but he didn't use it. Yeah, I guess we just didn't get to see it. There's no way he like didn't have it at some point. So. Good enough if you unfollow and refollow nothing again. Yeah, I kind of figured it wouldn't play the notification again. 
All right, so it is automat. Uh, yeah, Bellatar's already got a go 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 glove in the graveyard. Nice. Where don't he? Don't he? Oh, also, for the people that follow my regular content and stuff, uh, I don't know if you were aware, but I was missing a box from Japan that had all my OCG stuff in it, and it actually came last week to my parents' place, and I'm going to pick it up uh, Tuesday, I think. I'm really excited. <laughs> Get my OCG stuff back. Let's go! <laughs> Okay, so, uh, let's see, what's, what have I missed here? Did I miss anything? No. Dodo -do -do draw, toss the glove, drew two cards, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, book? Okay, alright. Everybody's been trying to book down Jano's Magical Knight of Dragons, and like, <laughs> it just hasn't worked out. I <laughs> what? Alright, Automata play. Return a, uh, a Gagaga -ga -ga related card. Any of those things. Onomatopoeia works too. Get something else. Let's go. Oh, he's got an MST too. Alright, Book of Moon MST. Bellator drew a not a bad starting hand for going second at all. The Steel Stardust Dragon. I have like nine of them in OCG. I have no English ones, but I have a lot of OCG Stardusts. I wanted that Starlight in, uh, in Dawn of Majesty, but I did not get one. It's like a $600 card, by the way. <laughs> oh, Jono's got his own Book of Moon? Alright. <laughs> hey, let's go! The combo! Attempts Book of Moon, other person activates Forbidden Lance. It happens every time. <laughs> Ever since we lost, uh, we lost Hey Trunade, you'll see that a lot more now. You'll see a lot more, uh, Book of Moon Forbidden Lance. <laughs> Back and forth. Happens a lot nowadays. Okay, so, yeah, Bellator's got a nice board built up. Ready for a rank 6 play? Jano's one monster is face down, and it's getting destroyed, I believe? No, he's gonna bolt galloping? Okay. Ah, maybe he's gonna, maybe he's gonna M7, perhaps, with, uh, with his level 6s. Yeah, the, you, you get a lot more... A lot more spell and trap back and forths when we don't have a card that puts them all back in your hand. Consistency skill without limitations. Yep. That is uh, that is what makes Onomat so darn good. Because you can just put whatever you want in it and still get to use the skill anyway. If, uh, if they're going to do anything to nerf Onomat, it should be the skill. I don't think they should do anything with the cards, personally. Hey, there we go. M7. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna get coat back. Oh, oh, we're going for the real good stuff. He's gonna go for the go 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 glove play. Play the coat overlay. I'm assuming into malevolent sin, and uh, move the face down out of the way. And that's game. That is gonna be TL on the board in this war. And hey, we got a war. It's going to be 2-1, to one and Bellator picks up the first win for TL. Very, very nice stuff. And Jono... Oh, wait, nope, not 2. There we go. Nope, not 10 either. I can do my job here. It'll be great. All right. So, yeah, Bellator picks up the first win with, uh, with the, the old reliable, as they say. <laughs> the Automats. They come in clutch. They come in so clutch. All right, so uh, we uh, we we're good to go. Uh, TL is on the board now, two to one defusion. Let's go. Uh, I don't think there's a repeat, as far as I can tell. Nope, no repeat. All right, let's go. Then uh, now we get to see what else Jono has because we've seen uh, Gaia since the start of the war. Oh snap, harpies! Do your job as a fakester, Mr. Streamer? Mr. Streamer, please update stat or I unsub tier 5. Alright, so uh, now the, the tides have changed a little bit. Uh, Bellator on the red side for TL takes a win with Automat. And now Jono is going out to what I can only assume are Harpies. I'm gonna assume. That's triple back row. <laughs> okay. Let's go... Dumps three back row. Seems good. 
And man, Bellator's gotten the, the Dodo -do draw straight up. The, the, the Dodo -do draw glove drop both times right off the bat. You know, not only can you set up your hand and get exactly what you need, uh, you can also just draw more cards, too. The ultimate cheater deck. <laughs> Alright, uh, Utopic Onomatopoeia. Interesting. That's fair. Special summon up to one of each. Say them with me, kids. Zubaba, Gagaga, -ga -ga, Go Go Go, and Dodo Do. I did see um, someone was complaining about Onomats online, you know, the normal, like, bruh, why Onomat do this? Why are they so good? And somebody was like, did you bite your tongue while you were trying to pronounce them? Why are you so mad? <laughs> and it made me laugh really hard. <laughs> Unlimit true name to make Onomats competitive again. Nani? Nani? Alright, oh wow, we got, we got all the level fours? We got all the level fours. Let's go. So uses Onomatopoeia to summon Gaga -ga Coat, and then Gaga -ga Coat's effect to summon Go 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 Glove. Oh, and a Gaga -ga -ga Bolt, too. Let's go. How many more times am I going to have to say these dumb Onomat names? <laughs> Help. Help me. <laughs> ABCD. Bruh, we should get ABCs in Duel Links. Let's go. Very fair. He's in Stygian Dirge. Yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen Stygian in a deck in a long time. All right, level four. Oh, we're going for Roach. Bet. Steel Swarm Roach negates some summons, some special summons. Do you have one of them? Yeah, we have uh, we have B Buster Drake, I believe. Roach can't wait. Sure. All right, back over to Jono, 600 life points, uh, and uh, he is also, I should have, I didn't do my job. He's down one deck. I flipped him. Nope. Nope, it's this way. Yeah, should look like this. So yeah, uh, 600 life points before Jono is down and out of this war, and that would mean that TL is tied already. Not letting him get too far away. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait a minute, did he set an elegant egotist? He set elegant, what? Alright, and uh, Fiendish Chain, but it's not going to be able to do much. Because he's just going to go straight into the uh, into the, the Synchro, I assume, maybe? Lamau Pal the Fiendish. I, uh, I am confused. I'm very, very confused. Alright, Swallow's Nest? Sure. Let's go. We take it. Slash is the way. Eh. OG Cyber Dragon to stop overflow. No. <laughs> Alright. Special summon uh, Perfumer. And uh, Perfumer effect. Sure. Feather Rest. Why not? <laughs> Tell me I'm missing something. That chain was big. It's okay. Uh, this is my second war. I saw some really weird stuff at the end of the last one. It may just be weird stuff happening. You never know. It may just be some really bizarre stuff. <laughs> Using Fiendish on a solitaire. Yo, chill! <laughs> Everybody going in on this man. So yeah, going out to Cyber Slash Harpy Lady. The Synchro that requires no tuner. Great. We're on the same page? Okay, fair. Alright, anyway. Oh? Oh, the roach, but the chalice in response. I was about to say, you should be able to roach this, right? Not if you chalice. So yeah, it'll increase his attack points, but it will negate his effects. No slash. Ah, the, the, the stream is delayed because uh, slash is just fine. He was ready. And now he's going to put it back to... <laughs> oh, no. He's bullying this Steel Swarm Roach, man. Hits it with a chalice to negate its effects and then put it right back in the extra deck. It's a one-two punch. And an elegant egotist. Sure, let's summon more Harpy Ladies. Misclick. Yeah, I, uh, that's that's all I can really think of. That is really all I can think of. It's okay. It happens. It happens. 
you know, again, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give some benefit of the doubt, you know, especially because I can't, I can't give you a lot of, uh, a lot of analysis on a squad that's like brand new. So, you know, you gotta cut them some slack here and there. But a direct hit from a cyber slash hurts. It's a nice twenty six hundred. And now uh, we're we're both in the red here. Bellator and Jono are both pretty low. He's got an MST. All right. Okay. 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 Let's go. Attack the back row. Why not? Trying to stop that cyber slash and putting stuff back in his hand, but Bellator's only got one card in hand. I'm not sure. I have no idea what he can do. You know, he can, he can, okay, Lance, sure. <laughs> oh, he's got an Anima to play? All right, I, oh yeah, it is only turn four. Okay, sure. Gaga -ga sister, let's go. Goes for Gaga -ga -ga head, the infamous uh, Onomat recovery. Gaga -ga -ga head. And Jono's only at 600 life points. Bellator doesn't need a direct. He just needs to deal enough damage. He's just got to deal enough damage to win here. Zubaba Bancho, Gaga Ga Coat. Yeah, 600 is not that big of a gap. So, three level fours. Where, where are we going? Where, where, where are we going? Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. Heroic Champion Excalibur for game. Yeah, he still has lethal because he's going to go 4K and swing in. Misclicked at the Phoenix chain. Yeah, yeah, I figured. That's game. Bellator takes down Jono, and we have uh, we have traded even here. Sphere one time, bruh. Ain't no way. There's no hand trap available, and uh, wow, yeah, real quick trade back and forth. Hey, Marcelo Wallace, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, uh, a real, real quick trade, and uh, this war is uh, is dead even now. We are we are neck and neck. So starting off, uh, yeah, TL not a bad showing considering they are facing down the uh, the defending champions who are still two and zero, uh, and the legends are still looking for a win this season. They haven't picked one up yet. We're only week three, so you know, but they haven't actually picked one up yet. And, uh, yeah, a real quick trade back and forth. That's, that's like any other war between two veteran teams. You know, because you always, you always worry, worry about the, the younger, like the freshman team, like coming in and, you know, getting bodied or something. But now, you know, we're, we're in a war. So, hey, Jumpy. Hello. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. Uh, you're, you're good timing because we are just kind of getting started here. Uh, we are watching the defending champions up against a, a new debuting team. And uh, they're even at the moment. So, yeah, thanks uh, thanks for coming and hanging out. It's uh, It's been interesting so far. We've seen a couple things. Nothing nothing uh, mind-blowing, but uh, Dangerous Fear, thanks for the follow. Jono started from Gaia. Yes. Yep, Gaia was, uh, was the first one, so. Didn't notice the new emote. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, I think that one's been around for a while. DF, never heard about those guys before. They are the, uh, the Season 9 champions. Uh, they debuted back in Season 7 and have qualified for playoffs every single season. So, yeah, a uh, tough matchup for sure. But, hey, thanks, uh, to the main channel for the raid as well. Welcome, everybody. This is game number five of the defending Season 9 champions, Versus a, uh, a a freshman team on their first run in Team Wars, and uh, yeah, you should uh, strap in because there's, there's we're gonna we're gonna see some interesting stuff. Uh, Jono came out for Defusion first, which I should probably change that, huh? Where is uh, where is McMurphy? There we go. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, Bellator is on a two-game win streak at the moment. Automats, of course, coming in, uh, making a splash. It happens. All right, I think I've done my job here. The numbers look right. Yep, two, two. Hey, hey let's go. So yeah, Jono's broken even for defusion. Uh, TL started off with an 0-2, and now Bellator is uh, is tearing it up with automats. So if you needed your, uh, if you needed an extra dose of uh, Gaga Ga Dodo Zubaba, all that jazz, then 
You're just in time. <laughs> but Bellator's gonna drop Steel Swarm Roach, two back row, and that's it. And hey, McMurphy coming in with TDs. And it's gonna be an uh, Allure of Darkness TDs, so yeah. Uh, drops the OG Thunder Dragon. Thin the deck out quick. Set up your Levian Air material. All seems good to me. I remember a time when OG Thunder Dragon wasn't getting played in there, so. Hey, Jumpy, what's up? Hello. Thanks, thanks to, thanks to Jumpy and also the main channel for the raids. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming to watch more Team Wars. Let's go. Alright, so, uh, up against the Roach. Hey, Mike, what's up, dude? Thank you so much for the follow. Hello. Let's go. Hey, the Lupine APK is online. Every single TD match I've seen today. Lupine immediately. Let's go. I'm here for it. Dragon Hawk from hand. Uh. Hmm. Two back row automat. I've seen some weird stuff in automats. Like, we know Bellator runs like Fiendish Chain. We saw Lance, I think, a chalice at some point, or maybe that maybe maybe Jono tossed that out. I don't remember. But that's it. That's it. Lupine Dragon Dark Pass. Ouch. Okay. Alright. Well, uh the ball's in Bellator's court at this point. I mean, two backer already. He's got a roach. Did he even Automata on play? No, he didn't. Bellator still has both skill activations online, so. Yeah, he's he's got options here. There, are, there, are, he can do some things. Obviously, depending on what what's in his hand. We we have I did uh, this is my second match today. I'm I'm doing a double header, and I did see some very very depressing bricks earlier. So, no, we're just swinging in with Roach, <laughs> and McMurphy's got a Spear Karibo to save the Lupine. He saves his Wolf Companion and. uh... Puts Roach down into defense. But now he's staring down three back row. And uh, True Nade is not coming to save the day. There's no True Nade. Not now, unfortunately. That would be great right about now. Saves his wolf companion. It's every TD player's best friend. Because it's always at their side. Somehow. Oh, hey, look! <laughs> Oh my god! Double Lupine? Alright. Double Lupine for the rank 4 play? Sure, why not? We take this. Dump the Dragon Dark and then, you know, just do more. Jelly Cannon. I haven't seen anybody play Jelly Cannon. I have seen Bad Aim a couple of times very recently. And some of it's come in kind of clutch. It's really wild. Alright, so we're going to attacks. We're going Lupine. <laughs> Alright, Lupine beat down and uh, Dragon Dark's here too, I guess. Moral support. Sure. So, uh, Bellator's got three back row on Automats. <laughs> I mean, I know they're starting to play more back row, but like, wow. Okay. Drowning one time. Drowning would be amazing. I mean, I. Th I almost lost it. <laughs> I thought that was the drowning. <laughs> okay. Flips Kanadia and uh, we'll take the 1700. And has he used it yet? Have I? Has he just not had a card to use on him on a play? I can't believe it. Yeah, I'm looking through the, the dual log and hey, there we go. Finally! Go Girl Glove. On him on a play. First time. This is turn five and it is the first time that Bellator has used it, so... Uh, yeah, the teams are flipped. Uh, Defusion is playing on the blue side, and uh, the Legends are playing on the red side. But uh, the names, at least in your upper right, are correct. Automat's breaking, not for long. Ga 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 head. I mean, to be fair, McMurphy could be in a much worse spot. Like, the head helps definitely. It's that it's that good old Automat recovery, but. You know, you're 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 getting you're getting to loop through stuff. He's got a dark banish that he can get rid of. Hmm. So this is kinda weird. <laughs> this is kind of a, a, a weird uh, a weird back and forth. Bellator's like kinda pulled himself out 
of a couple of binds now with uh, with head. He's going for sin, huh? Okay. And then yeah, he gets the card draw off of the Gaga head, sure. And uh, I guess just move one out of the way. Brick APK deleted. He uninstalled it. He said, "Hold on, where's my sister APK? Let me know. <laughs> Let me know." So yeah, Bellator is the only one that's taken damage, but he's still sitting on back row. He's got a couple of strong bodies up there. And McMurphy's kind of had a slow start. I mean, that's not to say that he can't come out of it and start making faster plays, but... Yeah, nothing nothing too crazy out of TD so far. And fixes every problem. I know what you mean by that. Oh, that's it. Bellator just gonna pass. So wait, he used the Malevolent Sin, but didn't... Hmm, okay. Didn't follow up on it. I mean, I guess in some ways he could be trying to let McMurphy's field be filled up, but I've seen way too many Thunder Dragon decks just hard sacrifice a monster to play something over it. And I mean, they play a lot of level 5s and 6s, so they only have to tribute one anyway. But the 3 back row, I mean... You know, Bellator's down almost half life, but... Eh... With all the back row he's got, he's got to have things to protect himself. So I think... I think it's a lot closer than the life points would lead you to believe. <laughs> Once per duel, limitations can be used on specific turns. Automat, haha. Automata play, go brrr. It's true. Hey, there you go. There's your hard tribute into the Dragon Roar. And uh, since Dark is getting sent, uh, you can add a Thunder Dragon. Hmm. Oh, going for hundred thunders. The good old, the good old, uh, good old hundred thunders, huh? Special summon out of your grave? Sure. All right, are we crashing with Malevolent? The the roar gonna gonna take one for the team and hit the Malevolent sin? Hundred thunders, yeah. Hey, Dasha Polanco, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Yeah, you you do see a lot more Thunder Dragon decks these days playing it. I, I see it just about every time, honestly. The the Thunder Dragon deck has evolved a lot for a deck that hasn't gotten any new cards or support or anything. It's changed quite a bit. Alright, uh we're not crashing. We're gonna we're gonna go after the coat, huh? Now, we're we're in stall mode. Yeah. Yeah, this one's not gonna be this is not a, a lightning fast fight for sure and now mcmurphy's just stuck here time to exceed after playing 100 thunders if you can get off the second part of its effect you know to be able to summon the same monster like if you summon dragon dark then you can summon as many of them from your grave as you want like definitely when you're facing down a full field of onomats that just keep refreshing i mean bruh and he's got dodo -do draw so he's, his hand is filled back up. Oh, he's got an ST. He's going to hit the one back row that McMurphy has. Unlock Kaiba today. Let's go. If you just started Duel Links, then welcome. Good to have you. <laughs> Alright, so 100 Thunders is going off. Just activate it anyway. Why not? Might as well. You got an empty slot. More defense? Sure. Bellator's back row has been... How long? It's been like... He, what, he had that set up on like turn one almost. Full back row. We got... You gotta swing in at some point. I mean, you, you gotta... You gotta hit him. I get it. They have effects when they... When they leave the field. And you don't really want to give all those to them. But like... You know, if you don't do anything... Then you're just letting them... Slowly build up. And when they get levy material, you, you all know how that goes. You all know how that goes down. Alright. Coat swinging it on the face down. On the roar. Uh-huh. Control automats. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bellator has has chains. We, we saw a fiendish chain. I'm assuming he's probably playing more than one. 
so I'm sure that's somewhere in the back row. Because there's still like two cards that we have not seen flip yet at all. And McMurphy hasn't really had the board space yet to summon anything like Levy or Dragon Duo. Like anything particularly nasty. Alright, back over to McMurphy. Yeah, we got a we got a we got a longer one on our hands here. We're up to turn eight. A little bit of a longer you know, the first few were kinda quick back and forth, faster decks. T D and Onomat aren't always the quickest, but we got hard tribute the dragon dark. Or hard tribute into the dragon dark, I should say. And McMurphy's got six cards in hand. There's gotta be a play here somewhere, right? I see three monsters getting banished. Levy in your time. Alright, so Bellator's had back row set forever. He's gotta have prepared for the Levy in here. Surely he's got something he can do here. Hey, there's the fiendish chain. I was wondering if that was gonna come up. Anything for McMurphy? A lance? No, nothing. Alright, uh, Fiendish Chain locking down the Levy, and uh, a couple Dragon Darks. Pain. <laughs> yeah, so Levy and Ears effects are negated by the chain, and now it's uh, it's stuck there. But hey, we got rank 5s. Maybe it's an Adrius, perhaps? Yeah, let's go. Adrius. So now you can just destroy uh, face up cards and uh, free your Levy and Ear. If you want to, you could destroy a monster. He could destroy the Fiendish Chain. I believe that would let his Levy near attack, since it has to activate its effect for it to not be able to attack. So he could free Levy and attempt to clear the board. That would just risk the back row, but no, he's going to go for the taking out the Malevolent Sin. Fair enough. Oh, he's got a Melody. Oh, wow. Why free one Levy in here when you can just make another one? So yeah, he grabs two more levies. Wait, what? Bellator is scooping out? Oh my god. The search was too much. The search was just too much. Alright, so uh, yeah, Bellator will uh, will take his first loss now. So that means uh, Defusion is back in the lead. Three and two. So after the uh, after the the melody activation, he said, "Ah, I'm done. I see where this is going." So I guess the uh, the back row. You know, we saw him set three back row, and one of them was a do 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 draw. So I'm only gonna assume that he had more uh, more bluffs back there, and uh, they did not pay off. Unfortunately, did not. Uh, McMurphy was not uh, was not deterred by. Random back row cards he didn't know anything about. He said, go ahead, do your worst. So, Defusion is back in the lead now, but, uh, you know, only only one up. You know, it's still three to two. I say he'd go ahead instead of sister. Uh, I think that was the only card in his hand. I believe. Hey, Domo Domo, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, I think, I think the reason he did that is because that was the only card he had, but I can't remember that specific moment off the top of my head. I, like, write down what decks people play, because I can't even remember. <laughs> like, so, trying to remember that specific board state when he activated it, not sure. So, uh, Onomat's fallen to TD. I've seen that quite a few times. I guess I'm not too shocked, but... Defusion, at least from their perspective, are, are in their rightful place now, back on top. <laughs> but the question is, for how long? As you know, there there was a, there were a couple of, of kind of squirrely moments there. Bellator had a couple of moments that were kind of like, ooh, like, you know, plays that are questionable. But for the most part, he's hanging in there. Playing through, you know, the, the O2 start is... is Never fun to try and play through. You know, you, 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 you can take some of the wind out of your sails, lose a little bit of your momentum going into a match, but, you know, you're, it's an, you got a fresh duelist, don't have to worry about it. You just got to kind of play through. Team just chain a harpy lady, bruh. It happens. It happens. Yo, what's up, Soul? Welcome back, dude. Good to see you. 
All right, we are at the table, and uh, now we're going to see what else Bellator has. So we saw Automats. Now I'm curious of what his other deck is. Because we've only seen... We haven't seen too much yet. We're only a few duels in, so... You know, la the last war I casted, I saw a little bit of everything. I saw some... Uh, some Cyber Dragons, all Evil Eye, Harpies, a little bit of everything. Um, so now, what uh, what else do you bring? Because they're kind of locked into this. They can't... You know, they've already submitted these decks ahead of time. So whatever Bellator has left as his second deck is what he's going to have to play with. So... Are we good? Hello? <laughs> Hello? I think they're ready, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what happened. So yeah, if you're just joining us, welcome. This is a match. Uh, Team Wars Season 10, Week 3, between Defusion, the reigning, defending, undisputed heavyweight champions of Season 9, up against a brand new debuting squad, uh, the Legends. This is their first season with Team Wars. Uh, Defusion currently uh, 2 and 0, oh, continuing the win streak of uh, after winning Grand Finals last season. Now they have not dropped a match since. And uh, the Legends are still looking for the first match. You can see all the stats in the top left there, including the uh, the, the round differential. So let's go. And, uh, hmm, Yami. Uh, what did Jono lead? Uh, uh, Gaia. All right, so we have a Yami. I've seen a couple different things on Yami today. It's always hard to tell. 22 cards. All right, let's go. So, uh, Thunder Dragons are up first this time. McMurphy's on the play with a Lupine, of course. 800 followers. Hey, let's go. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. You know, my, my casting has overshadowed a lot of my other stuff lately, but thank you. I really appreciate it. The APK is online. It is active. We are ready. We are tossing Dragonhawk immediately. Hmm. Yeah, Yami is, uh... I've seen some people play Gaia on him today, because uh, he also gets access to Dragon Knight's Path. So it could be a Gaia. It's 22 cards. Feels like it's not thick enough to be TD or uh, or Fire King or something. I don't know. So what are we doing here? We're tossing Dragonhawk, right? Yeah. Uh. Hmm. I thought it was he's banishing Hawk. Perhaps. I don't know what. I don't know what. Yeah, toss uh, Hawk and Dark, right? It's not thick enough. Uh, generally, no. I mean, there are some some, you know, lean Thunder Dragon decks. Some on the thinner side, so it's not impossible. With 22 just seems a little small. I mean, again, not ruling it out. It very well could be. But I can't confidently say. Alright, so yeah. Dragonhawk effect. Dragon Dark effect. Add the OG to hand. Return a card back to deck. Activate the OG. Draw some spell and trap TD. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Hey, it must be seriously scuffed. Ah! Let's take a little extra work to set it up, yeah? For sure. Jeez, sorry. Yawns. This is... I uh, I work nights, so this is like the middle of night for me. <laughs> Look at a little yikes. Hey, there it is. It's Gaia. All right. Yeah, McMurphy's had to do a lot of work to, to get this set up, and all he's really got is a Lupine at this point. And we know he's got... OG Thunder Dragon in hand at least and a Dragon Dark so there's a good chance that uh, that McMurphy may go down here he may drop this one I'm not sure galloping guy activation going to search the dragon let's go we're ready for fusion if he's got a dragon's mirror this is this is gonna be bad TD the new brick meta yeah even with that lupine APK even with that Lupine APK, it's still not quite enough to be able to bail yourself out of this situation. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. It's hard It's hard to call. Oh, he's going for Sky Galloping? 
So he's going to go for the continuous spell, the Spiral Spear Strike. Can push your opponent's monsters into defense position and also cycle through cards in your deck real quick. You're going to draw two and drop one. Yeah, try would be amazing right now. Oh, is he going to summon? Yeah, he's got it. He's got the uh, the Dark Flare. Oh, he's got the Prisma one, too. That's a little bit of a flex. Better have the pinned go. Oh, yeah. Triff. Haha. <laughs> is that game 23? Yeah, that technically would be because he can deal piercing battle damage since this card's name changes to Dragon Champion. So he'll be able to deal 23 off the Lupine and attack for game. All right, let's see it. Sky Galloping dealing the damage. Cycle through the cards and uh, Dark... But there's nothing in McMurphy's hand! Nothing! Oh, we are we are in a in a tight tug of war now. Bellator is going up three to one, and McMurphy will take his first loss. We're we're tied up again, three to three. So TL holding their own against the uh, the defending champions, hanging in there. Sad now. It happens. It happens. So we are we are all tied up. If you're just joining us in uh, in this matchup between the uh, the reigning defending champions Defusion and the uh, the relative newcomer squad of uh, the Legends, uh, who are still looking for their first win this season, and uh, a win against a team like Defusion would be massive. They took they took. Two losses so far. They still want to win, but uh, a win against DF would be that. That sends a message. <laughs> that is that is a statement. They say, "Hey, I'm here. I'm here to win some duels. Let's go." But uh, before that, uh, we are tied at three and three. Uh, McMurphy swapping decks. No repeat on this one. So it is gonna be Gaia versus uh, versus Onomat. So hey, we're back into the Onomats. Yeah, McMurphy opted for Thunder Dragon and Automat in this war. We must win this duel. It's time to do the Automats have had a ton of impact on almost everything I've cast for a long time now. They've been pretty strong. So, Dodo -do draw right away. Toss the uh, Utopic Onomatopoeia for the card draw. And uh, put back a Gaga -ga Bolt for uh, Sister. So, I'm assuming McMurphy's already got a coat. This is a lot more straightforward than all of the level 4s we've seen in the past in this war. <laughs> so many level 4s on the last Automat deck. But uh, yeah, this is this is the comfort combo right here. My comfort play. And hey, a bonus Automatopia just for fun. So now we're going to make a rank 6. I'm assuming we're going for the Bouncer, yeah? I would assume. Hey... I'm a genius, tech genius. Bouncer and a coat and uh, some back row, sure. Lightning Vortex one time. I haven't seen Lightning Vortex in a long time. Have not seen it in a while. All right, it's Gaia time. So Galloping Gaia field spell off of the skill. And uh, what are we missing? You reveal a Gaia to search for a dragon. So uh, Bellator is going hunting for, I would assume, Curse of Dragonfire. Though he can go for Dark Flare. Oh, McMurphy's got an MST. But <laughs> wait, Bellator's got an MST of his own? All right, so uh, McMurphy flips MST to blow up the Galloping Gaia field spell. Bellator responds with an MST out of hand to hit McMurphy's other back row. It seems weird, but it looks like McMurphy's really thinking about it. And it's a Book of Moon. Ouch. Not... Good MSTs on both sides. Good to hit the field spell, but also uh, nice to hit the, the book. So yeah, they, they both got something out of that. Bellator's only got the knight, though. And Bouncer is, uh, is bigger than the knight. So, uh, uh, 500 damage off of the, uh, killing the, the guy that coat. 
but uh, that bouncer is going to be a problem. It is going to be an issue. <laughs> Two back row, so Bellator could find a way around it. If he can't beat over it, there's he still has options here. Handless Gaia, yeah, he's out. We're back to Handless Gaia, huh? We've gone that far back. Okay, uh, second on a play, so uh, yeah, McMurphy's skill is drained. Oh, and he just he just get coat back. Ooh, a Kanadia to flip the coat down. Okay, so now he's just uh, just on Bouncer, which I mean, hey, Bellator has no cards in hand. He's stuck top decking, so killing the one uh, the one magical knight you've got seems good. Oh, he's got a chalice. Gained 400, so we're gonna crash. I was about to say the bouncer is gonna die too. So now Bellator is praying for top decks. Oh, he got gateway to chaos on the top deck. That's crazy. Let's go. All right, gateway to chaos to search for a guy, and of course going for the uh, the magical knight, the one he can summon because he has no monsters. And that can easily get over the face down coat. When the chalice is forbidden. Now. Oh, he's got another book of moon. Bro, everybody's got Prisma Book of Moon. Am I the only one? I don't have one. Alright. So, uh Yeah, flip the coat back up and what's in McMurphy's hand? Oh yeah, he doesn't it doesn't even matter. He can just summon from the grave anyway. Let's go rank four. Let's go rank four plays. So yeah, it's it's a lot different here. Bellator's stuck hoping for uh, for top decks. Meanwhile, McMurphy's got Coat still ready to go to keep uh, summoning from the grave and making more plays. Going for the sin. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's going for Corbage. Oh no. Oh no. Yep, Corbage gonna put that back. They can still use the Digibugs. <laughs> they still have access to this. That's crazy. And he's going to overlay on it one more time into Gaia Dragon the Thunder. Bruh, he's playing Gaia Dragon against the Gaia. Swinging in for 26. And unfortunately, this is this is a Gaia Yami. So there's no Destiny draw. He's The Destiny draw is, is Prey. <laughs> at this point. Alright. Top deck, what is it? Set one and pass. Dang. Oh, and it's an MST at the end of Bellator's turn! Dragon's Mirror, it was a bluff. That is game. And uh, Bellator is KO'd. McMurphy's got this. 26 direct. And that is it. Bellator will end the day three and two, and now Defusion is back in the lead. McMurphy's second win of the day. Let's go. The Chain Link Three MST, bruh. You never see it coming. All right, so uh, again, we are. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say for a team for for a two and O team versus an O and two team, complete opposite ends of the spectrum. They're going back and forth. TL is, is really holding their own. They And week over week, uh, if you look back at their stats, which I don't have graphics for, but I can at least tell you about this, they have been improving week over week. Uh, week one, they lost to Phoenix in a 10-3 war, so they started off real rough. Last week, they went up against X and O, and they lost 10-7, so a much closer war last week. They have, they have tough matchups. They're up against teams that have been in team wars, or compete in other leagues like this, and now they're uh, now they're neck and neck with with last season's champions. So it's it's another moment like the war I casted earlier today, where you know win or lose, you, you have to give props because they are they are keeping up. You know we could have easily sat down here and watched a 10-0. On paper, you might think that's what's going to happen. You know, you have a triple playoff qualifier team just coming off of a win last season. 
up against this brand new team that's like trying to find their footing and getting used to team wars and getting used to working together as a unit. So on paper, you might say, oh, this is a stomp. Like this is going to be 10-0 or, you know, they're going to win a couple duels here and there. But no, so far that has not been the case. I mean, Defusion has has obviously held them off and, and now they're, you know, back in the lead by one duel. But, you know, when you when you when I when I saw this match and I was doing my research last night and I saw it, I'm like, wow, this could this could be a blowout and it has not gone that way at all. You know, that's that's nothing against them. That's not underestimating them at all. Not underestimating either team. It's just when you look at the numbers specifically and just the stats alone, you say, whew, this is this is going to be a rough one. So again, you know, win or lose, you gotta give them props for keeping up. How many teams are there? There are 32 teams. There are 32, so a ton. Big. So uh, yeah, we're just uh, we're just waiting on the next player to come up for TL. They still have three duelists left, so we're just trying to figure out. Who is going to take on McMurphy next? And uh, McMurphy still is on his second deck, so a win would knock him out and bring up another duelist from DF's side too. So yeah, TL is not that far behind. They're still almost dead even. And thanks to Bellator's efforts, they're on the board and in this fight for sure. Now it's just up to the teammates to keep it going, so... All right, looks like Minty is going to be playing next. And oh, dang, they, they beat me to it. They're going all the way back in already. All right, so uh, it is it is uh, McMurphy from Defusion versus Minty from the Legends. And uh, looks like we may be getting some more Thunder Dragon. I would assume. I don't know. <laughs> it's you. It's a you bell bet confirmed. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be TDs. So Automat versus Thunder Dragon. And dang, McMurphy on the no, no, no draw. Let's go. Chaos Betrayer, Lure TD. It could be. You never know. You get a little bit of the... You splash a little bit of the chaos stuff in there. It's fine. No problem. Alright. McMurphy's been on point with the Dodo no draws. Dumps Onomatopoeia. Hmm. No Onomatopoeia play yet, huh? I assume he's going to use whatever he digs out of uh, Gaia's sister's summon to uh, to activate it. I assume. I can't confirm, but... Yeah, I, I think I think we're in for a hefty war here. I mean, we're only... We're an hour in, and we're only on game number eight. So, again, you never know. Somebody could start going on a tear and just win duels one after another, but... Yes, yeah, so we added Gaia Bolt, and then he's going to loop it back to deck... To grab his coat. He left it on the coat rack on the way out the door. Now he's cold. Fiend farewell this turn. Let's go. Alright. We're back into tongue twisters. And we're ready for rank 6. The comfort combo. Oh wait. Oh wait. 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 He's gonna. He's gonna coat. Special summon a go go do do from your grave, and since uh, Utopic counts for all those, sure. All right, now we're going for the rank six. Just leaving up on the P, I assume, as just extra defense here. Let's go. We're going for uh, M seven. Okay, okay, fair enough. So, uh, any back row. Oh, he's going to use the M7 already. He's going to loop. He's going to... Yeah, he's going to pay the coat and then loop the coat right back to hand. Yeah, I I some I sometimes forget about that. That it does have some loop capabilities. So then he can use Utopic Onomatopoeia's effect to special summon the coat back from hand. So now he can make a rank 6 and a rank 4. That's what, that's what you get with that board. Sister, coat, and Utopic you can make... Rank 6, rank 4, pretty easily. If you're willing to go into M7, which 
M7, decent stats, good effect, sure, why not? So you can make an M7 and a Roach. And then just dump some back row while you're at it, too. Oh my god. Yeah, that seems great. Really, really solid turn one from McMurphy. Two back row, special summon negate, M7. Absolutely. Who needs a real family when you have a sister, coat, and a roach? Same. Honestly, same. <laughs> All right, Dragon Hawk effect from hand. Drop it. Hmm. Send special summon dark. So he, uh, Minty is up against a uh, pretty tough boy. This is Minty's first turn in the war, and uh, I, I always like to analyze what their first turn in a war looks like. It, yeah, this is not a fun one. <laughs> this is not a fun turn one to have. You have a whole big board staring you down. So many threats, so many ways to stop you from making plays, and so many things that need your attention immediately that you have to deal with. Alright, so we're gonna hard summon the Dragon Roar. Finally stop mix- I've always mixed up Hawk and Roar for some reason, but let's go. We're, we got there. <laughs> we did it, Reddit! Alright, um... Oh? Hello, Dragon Duo? Already? Already! We should be able to roach this. Unless Minty has... Excuse me, jeez. Unless Minty has some kind of chalice or something. No? Just gonna let it get negated. Huh. I was about to say, a chalice would be amazing right now. Heck, we've already seen that play once! Going to swing the roar into the roach, but a book of moon to stop it immediately. Yeah, McMurphy had a really, really strong board. And uh, Minty needs a hand trap to survive. This this is lethal. M7 effect, activate, pay one material, put the card uh, back into Minty's hand. Yeah, this is not looking good. This is Minty's first duel. One turn so far in this war, and already... Got booked down, got negated, or, uh, yeah, summon negated by Roach, booked down. Ugh, not, not, uh, not the start you want when you, when you take the hot seat, unfortunately. Who knows? The, the, Binti's hand could be just full of hand traps. And then the most amazing top deck of all time. Next turn. But for some reason that sounds improbable. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I'm making it up on the fly. Well, this is this is all McMurphy's duel to win here. I mean, life is 4,000 all, but... I don't know. I mean, M7 activation. Put uh, the card, whatever this thing was. Yeah, that looks like that's what McMurphy's going to do, I believe. I was about to say, unless he loops one of his own monsters again. I think he's going to go for the same play. Just flip the seat over and sit on the cold side. That's pillows. I have epic gamer chair. If I flip the gamer chair, I sit on wheel. All right, we got a lethal battle phase from McMurphy. I didn't see a delay. Swinging in. No delay. TDs fall again, man. McMurphy had a had a crazy opening board, I should say again. Like, I don't know what you would have done against that anyway. Oh. Not 45, good lord. I I don't know what you could have done against that board. I mean 45 to 3. Ah uh, no, I just fat fingered my keyboard and said, hey, let's go. 45 to 3, good night, moon. No, no. But 5 to 3. Defusion is uh they're back to pulling ahead a little bit. You know, they opened with a with a two-game lead, and uh then they got kind of locked into this tug of war situation. But now they are they're back. They're back to the, the two game the cushion. Plus 42. Yeah, buddy. Whew. Yeah, that uh, that was a uh, that was gonna be 
one heck of, a, of an uphill battle no matter what. Even if you open really, really well, a, a super strong Onomat board is hard to overcome. Like, you need, like, the god hand of god hands to beat that in a lot of cases. So, uh, yeah, that puts Defusion at uh, halfway to victory. They need 10 wins to win the war. But uh, I think TL still has some tricks up their sleeves. They've uh, they have been working hard to hold their own here. So I, I'm, I'm curious to see what else they got. No repeats yet. Still no repeats. Oh, is this KCGT? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Can I watch the game? Can I watch the duel, please? Konami, please. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Was there a repeat that I just didn't see in the chat? Maybe not. Oh! Connection failed. Huh? Nani? What happened? <laughs> what happened? What, what happened? Uh oh. Uh. Judge! <laughs> repeat. Okay, they are repeating. Okay. Yeah. Uh, TL is gonna use one of their repeats. I wasn't crazy. Maybe I'm lagging. Because that message did come in after they, they started. Okay, let's try this again. So, uh, yeah, they are repeating. Uh, so Minty will play the same TD deck. So it is gonna be uh, it is gonna be Automat from McMurphy for Defusion against Minty's TDs for the Legends. <coughs> All right, Dodo -do -do draw again, man. Almost every time he's gotten it, Automatopia off of the Dodo -do -do draw. Okay, Automata play again. Go turn on your microwave. Bro, that's the tier one deck right there. That's the only tier zero we have is my microwave. Alright, Gaga got coat. We've got the same board again. He's gonna do the same thing. He's gonna use the M7, loop the coat, onomatopoeia, summon the coat, rank four, rank six. Let's go. Where are all the hero flashed at? Bro, where's evil heroes? Yep, Utopic Onomatopoeia, he summoned the same stuff. Two back row? Oh my god, it's the same board! It's the same board! No! <laughs> He's got the same board! The M7, the Roach, the double back row! What do you do? Alright, Minty is going for Melody. Hero Flash stalls is true. Well, if we had a Dusted Gold and uh, Malicious Bane, we'd have the real, real evil heroes. He's gonna dump Levy? Oh my god. Consistency skill gone wrong. Yeah, this is, this is more than just the skill. It's a lot more than just freaking Onomata play. And he passes. No, this is on the repeat. Minty passes. Uses Melody of Awakening Dragon to toss Levianir. Five cards in hand. Two of them are Levianirs. It, it's gotta be a bunch of hand traps or something, right? It has to be. This can't be game again. This can't be game again. Can we finally kill him? They just gotta change the skill. Just make it so you can't use any non-automat extra deck monsters, and it's pretty much solved. Then it becomes rogue. Alright, McMurphy's got a full board! Three monsters, three spell and traps! We have a delay. There's something. Minty can do something here. But of course, attack order is important. Sphere Karibo! Yeah, M7 is, is going to... I saw a delay on that. Oh, swings in with the roach anyway, says, I don't care about your card draw. You can have it. Allured by darkness. 
says, I don't care that you get it. You can draw all you want. I got this. All right, Allure of Darkness. Draw two, banish a dark monster from your hand, or send everything in your hand to the grave. I don't know. That that could help. That could really help. Yeah, Dragon Roar's effect will go off. Who's hated more, Automat or Yuma? <laughs> Automat, I think, definitely. I don't even think Yuma's that annoying. I don't know. It's Yuma because his voice lines. Gagaga's sister has another effect. The effect is winning the game. What an effect. Get back to my boss. I mean... Just play Raigeki. Just play Raigeki, five head. Come on. Do it. Do it. I exceed the summit. Yeah. Okay. He is kind of annoying, huh? <laughs> You've convinced me. You've made me a believer. Alright, summon the Dragon Dark. I don't know. I mean, Minty's got two Levianeers in hand. Like, I'm not saying that it's possible to win this turn, but I am saying it's possible to, like, really put a dent in McMurphy's board. It's just the Roach is going to be kind of a problem. For sure. Oh, he's got a Chaos Betrayer. Okay. Okie dokie. Surely. I don't. I. I. The levees, but I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's enough. Oh, charge of the light brigade. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. The uh, charge for the Raidens. Seems good. All right, Hawk. Hawk effect. Ranks, we got a rank six, but like, man, I really, <laughs> I don't, again, it's one of those, you hate to see it. You really do. Um... Well, Excalibur? Hmm. <laughs> she called 911. She's. Gaga's sister has another effect. Call an ambulance, but not for me. Alright, that's, uh, that's a levy. Clad in drip, Lamel. Uh, yeah, I was about to say it's a levy, but but the roach though. What's what's in the grave? It's all dark monsters in the grave too, so it can't even be light and dark mix. Not now, anyway. I mean, unless unless Minty's got another way to put more in there. I don't know. Uh. This is rough. This is real rough. It's, 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 it's one of those moments when you stare at the board and you're just like, how? What, what do I do? <laughs> it's like staring down good old Dragoon. <laughs> Help. Um, yeah, going to rank six for the M7? I mean, sure. Oh, he's got a book! Oh, that's so rude. Oh, that's so rude! Yep, flip it down and... Yeah, I was about to say, I, there's just... There's just no way. Alright, Defusion is extending their lead. Six to three. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, I didn't turn on the deck lights. Ah! Can't do my job. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's another win for Defusion. 
They have uh, they have doubled TF's their TL score at this point, and are, are trying to keep it going. So, hey, the gangster, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Cough, bro. Help. I've been chugging water. This is my second one, and this is like the middle of the night for me. Help. <laughs> okay, so uh, with that, uh, Minty is is out. And now it's up to either Flash or Architect. They've only got two players left, and Defusion still has four. So they uh, they've they've got quite the the mountain to climb here. Again, it's it's with this kind of format, you you can really never be too sure. I mean, you can't you can't say for certain that one team has lost or the other one's lost. But uh, yeah, when you when you get to a really long win streak that you have to win on, yeah, it gets really rough. So who is coming up next? They've only got two players left, four decks separating them from uh, from defeat. And no, I'm not talking about giant grinder or laundry dragon, a worm. <laughs> Wait, you spelled that wrong. That's O-Rim. <laughs> uh. Yeah, TL has just had a, a, a tough fight from the very beginning of this thing. And, you know, they've, uh, they've had some not-so-great opening hands and things. And a lot of stuff working against them on top of... Facing off with, you know, the team that won last season and has not lost a match yet this season. It's hard. It's it's tough, man. I mean, you know, I'm no I'm no pro player. I mean, you never see me in MCS or anything, but like I I, I can imagine at least what uh, what is going through their minds when they're staring down some of these super competitive teams like this. Who to check is climbing a mountain next pro tag. It's a it's a it's a proverbial mountain. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a metaphor. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I couldn't remember the word. Yeah, they it's it's they got they got a lot of work ahead of them. <laughs> Diatonic next MCS winner, huh? That'll be the day. When Galaxy Eyes gets more support, maybe. But until then, no. Nah. No. Nah. And also because those tournaments happen during the day when I'm asleep. So, uh, I'm looking through the chat. It looks like there was some kind of situation with their their replay not being called in the in the correct channel or something. I think they're trying to work this out. Um, because, uh, TL wanted to call a replay, or a, a repeat on, uh, on Minty's Thunder Dragon deck, and I guess they, they maybe posted it in the wrong channel, or didn't do it soon enough, I'm trying to reread everything, I didn't quite see what happened, but, um, yeah, that's why we're, we're on a little bit of a delay here, so stand by, we'll be, we'll be back into it pretty shortly. Next up on these worms archetype, but anybody know... But did anyone now also on the news die a team next? What? <laughs> did you ask an AI to write that message for you? Bruh. Bruh. Mm. I wanted... I didn't answer... I, I wrote this down to tell myself to look it up and I didn't. I was just curious who Defusion has played against so far. Because they've won both of their matches. Let me let me take a look here. Let's go back. Where's week one results? Week one. Defusion. Where are they? Where defusion? Okay, so defusion won against XNO with a score of ten to eight in week one, and then in week two they played against uh, against. Wait, what? They played against DN? Defusion? Their week two results in the in the Discord say they played against BR Meta. They won 10 to 5. Oh my god! I can't believe you've done this to me. 
I actually can't believe this. That is insane. <laughs> oh boy. DN is not defusion. DN stands for D's nuts. Oh my god. I walked into that one. That's fair. Alright, whatever. Alright, so, uh, it looks like Architect is gonna be up next for, uh, the Legends. We are, we are ready to get back into it. <laughs> yeah, don't you yeah me. Oh my god. I'm the, alright, hey, do we have Shiranui? Architect is, uh, is bringing the, uh, the Odeon to the table. Endless Trap Hell? Hello? My turn. Alright, uh, Automats are up first. McMurphy continuing the, uh, the run here. Four wins so far. Looking for a fifth one. Half of the team's score, let's go. Half a victory from one player? Seems good. Alright, Autumn on a play right off the bat. No other cards. Wow, no do to do draw this time. Missed it. Almost every single time he's popped do to do draw right away. How's your first reaction to DN Defusion? No, I mean, I thought... Nah, I thought that, um... They were talking about, uh, the Legends. That's why I said, like, no, you mean D... Like, when I said Defusion, I mean, like, you, do you mean Defusion? When the Simpson coming, bro. Alright, what do we got? What's Architect got? We got... Oh! RB! Ritual Beast, are you ready for some loops? Brother, give me loops. Winda, there it is. Any crab sips in chat? Yo, any crabs in chat? Let's go. Time to sleep. Bruh. Architect bringing the Ritual Beast. Okay. Okay. I was about to say, we're going to go into Alta Cannon Hawk, yeah? I don't see Ritual Beast too often. Okay, I can vibe. I can deal with it. It's been ten days. I'm not. I'm not falling for this again. They're still doing their combo. Oh, I thought it was gonna be another these nuts joke. I don't know how you would have done it, but <laughs> I don't know how you would have done it from there. But I was not falling for it. All right, Canahawk loop. Loop into the into the pedal fin in the window. So we got to window. Winda is here! And then the pedal fin to yeet stuff back. Oh wow, McMurphy's only on a Gaga sister too. This could be really bad. And then we got we got there. All up into Ulti Apelio. Nice. Going in for 24. Dealing some damage. Alright, bet. MST to go after the back row and uh, it's set so I'm assuming Architect can make no. Oh, we had a breakthrough skill. The MST did, but he can still activate it from the grave. Not this turn, but it's a uh, good old uh, negate the effects of a face up effect monster your opponent controls after banishing it from the grave. See, so, yeah, I kind of sad. I mean, it stopped him from using it this turn at least, but it didn't really put him out too much. He can still he can still use it anyway. That's value. That's mileage right there. And all he's got is Ulti Apelio right now. He just ignored it. You're right. You're right. I did. <laughs> he just, that's not happening again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, damn. <laughs> Alright, on I'm on a play. Let's go. What are we swapping out for? So I believe I believe that's the second time McMurphy has used it. Yes. So this is the last on I'm on a play of the duel. Oh, we're going for head. He's going for head? Yep, ga 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 head. I guess what I was saying is right. Sure. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> All right, sister, ready for some rank six, perhaps? 
and yeah, sister, to copy the level or beef. That's Got a tag early. Yeah, I was about to say he's gonna need to do it here soon. Bro, are y'all going to SawCon this year? Cause I'm going. If y'all wanna meet up, play some actual Yu-Gi-Oh. Meet up at SawCon. Let's go. Gaga -ga -ga bolt to blow up the window. Behold, my monster's effect activates. I'm not. I'm not some fool. Trust me. I. My housemates and I literally are always trying to pull these nuts jokes on each other. I can't believe I fell for the DN one. I trusted y'all. Now the trust has been betrayed. There is no more trust. Come out. Oh. A a All right, let's go. All to Pedalfin. That's it, huh? No rank six. And McMurphy's only got 1,600. So, I mean, he doesn't need to do two. Oh, wait, no. He's going to rank six now. I build the overlay network. Architect doesn't doesn't have to deal too much damage here. I mean, okay, M7. Yeah, I was about to say. If he can M7, that might help. This is one of those situations where it's like, how much Ritual Beast have you played against? How prepared are you for that matchup? It's, it's hard to fault, you know, like, not knowing what to do. It's like, uh... It's like, I have the same problem. I'm terrible when I run into decks like Ritual Beast. Don't forget updating names. Oh, shoot. Did I not do that? My bad. I think I clicked it too fast. That should work. Thank you. <laughs> My monster's effect activate. I've noticed that if I like just go ham and click at whatever speed I want, it doesn't change for me. And it, it may just be my computer. I don't know. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> Mini came in. Laval, I'm done. I'm done with y'all. <laughs> oh! Lamoa. Alright, what are we doing here? We're looping. We're looping. We're doing the, the ritual beast things. <laughs> Dang. Alright, Winda in hand. Uh-huh. Win Windy's nuts. Ha 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 ha. Please ban mini. No. Never. Never. Can never. <laughs> Oh, yikes. Okay, goodbye, board. And now McMurphy's holding on to one back row? I... A question mark? Alright, going back into Pelio. It's only 1,600. That's all Architect needs to win. Forbidden Lance loses 800? That's not enough. That's not enough. A Pelio does it. McMurphy's KO'd by the Ritual Beasts! Bruh. Architect came in swinging! Wait, why does it say spectate? Bruh. 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 <laughs> okay. Bro, is this a KCGT moment? Let me know. <laughs> Let me know. The microwave's off. I haven't turned it on, I promise. It's not a microwave issue. Hey, Lunar owns Twitch. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. Do you actually own Twitch? That's crazy. <laughs> Alright. We're good. No microwaves necessary. So yeah, Architect comes in with Ritual Beasts and immediately takes a game off of McMurphy. And now, uh... TL is trying to, to make their way back. They're only a couple games behind. They're not that far down. I'm on my way to turn mine on. Oh, boy. Yeah, they're really not that far behind. You know, only a couple games. 
It's when you start getting into these win streaks where you need to win like five, six duels in a row. That's when it's like it becomes a lot less probable to do. But only only a couple wins. Yeah, that's definitely playable. So now the question is, who does the fusion send next? They have three players left versus TL's two. And Architect has already won and O, oh, won the first duel he played. And it looks like it's going to be Pazur. I hope I pronounced that right. Feel free to yell at me if I don't. Doesn't need a potato server as his head is one. No, there's no server. It's just potato. All right. Hey, Shoma, thank you for the follow. Welcome. All right, back into it. Uh, it is six to four. D Fusion, the defending champions, up against the Legends, a uh, a newcomer squad. We are currently looking at Architect from the Legends on the red side playing Ritual Beast, and now uh, Pazur is in the hot seat on the blue side, stepping up for the first time in the war. Let's go. Hey, what's up, Tesseract? Welcome back. Uh, going all right so far. Nothing, nothing too wild. We had some good tug of war back and forth, and now uh, DF is taking the lead a little bit, but I'm not sure for how long. I'm curious. They've they've definitely gone back and forth. Alright. Pazur's first turn of the war. Triple back row pass. Let's go. That's it. Three back row and a turn in. Sometimes that's really all you need. He's up against a Ritual Beast from Architect, and I have no idea what Pazur is playing. 20-card Yami? Uh, you don't see that one a lot. The Architect's got triple back row of his own, and he's just going for the wind of beatdown. Buns the goat waiting for... Yeah, Buns has not played yet. We have not seen Buns. Buns is in chat, but hasn't played yet. Trap TD. Wait. Was there a pass his turn? Oh no. Break the Gaia? It could be. It could be. I, I'd be shocked if Gaia bricked that hard. It's absolutely stunned. Alright, Tamer Elder coming out. Let's go. Summon some extra Ritual Beast. Why not? And summons uh, Canahawk. Well, that's technically lethal. I mean, that's all you really need, right? Hmm. Too good to be true. Yep. Yeah, there you go. We do have uh, the Elder Hawk combo. When the Hawk is Elder. I expected you to do that. Oh! I hey, we have a TTH! My trap activates. Dude, he's using an artifact deck. For, uh... Oh! Architect's got bad aim! Yeah! Whenever your opponent activates a card or effect, target a different card and destroy it. We may get a back row back and forth here. Yeah, Book of Moon, he's going to attempt to use it. Going to try and completely shut Artifact's entire board down. Flips Winda down, blows up his other monsters. Whew. And now Pazur's only got one more back row left. And Architect had the Ritual Beast Ambush. Target one Tamer and one Spiritual Beast. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he can He can just flip it back. Correct. But the Ambush to give him back the same monsters. He blew up. It, it's almost like he just didn't do anything. He TTH to try and, you know throw a wrench in it and just immediately bring those same monsters back just hello and this that's that's what preserve has been playing with since turn one I mean he dumped three back row and passed hmm yeah this is this is rough man He's going to get a fuse again. And Apelio is lethal. And Preserve's only got one back row. Are we are we seeing Ritual Beast dominance? They came in and immediately took control of the war? 
Yep, ulti of Pelio attack. Forbidden Chalice to gain. Oh, no! Oh, my God. Bruh. It's Architect. <laughs> Bricked guy it is. I guess. I still don't even know. I have no idea. I assume... That's it, man. Ritual Beasts have won two duels back to back. And now TL has almost caught back up with Defusion. It's six to five. Slowly clawing their way back. That's a brick. That's, that's not a brick. That is the entire construction company. That is the entire brick making organization. Trap TD. I didn't see no traps. Okay, I saw Treacherous Trap Hole, but that was about it. Oh my god. That that might be one of the hardest bricks I've I've casted. And like, what do I even say? Alright. Rough, for sure. Not what you want to see. Especially when you're trying to get a lead here. R ritual beasts man they kind of they kind of throw a wrench in the works you know how much how much practice do you have against playing uh, to try to beat ritual beasts all right so it is uh preserve is going out to my so we may see some harpies here up against the ritual beasts back to back on these nuts it doesn't work when you just say it <laughs> All right, Canahawk. No, no Elder Hawk this time. Yep, I'll lock myself out. Exit is right over there, my guy. He's he really is about the people leave. Wait, I think I even have that one. I do. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, so we got a we got a Canahawk and a triple back row from Architect. So Pazur is on my um, Harpy and or Triamid. <laughs> and or it's <laughs> God, ignore me all right uh harpy channeler gonna use the hunting ground to try and dig into the back row bad aim to kill the channeler are you kidding me that's kind of wild blows up the channeler a bad aim dude he's played those so beautifully like, actually kind of unreal. Pazur sets two back row and passes. Is this an O2? Th this is not good. He lost Chandler, and that just screwed everything up on his board. That was his normal, and it's just gone. Immediately. The HHG backfired as hard as it could have. Okay, well, uh, Architect still got two back row. Uh, there's a Wind of Vanished and a Canahawk on board. And one in hand. Hmm. I mean, there there's an opportunity here for them to tie this thing up. It's not impossible. Summoning the wind, uh, we gonna get loops. In love with a bad aim confirmed. Bad aim is nutty, man. It makes plays. It can really do some damage. And, I mean, that's what we're seeing. All right, all to Canahawk. So I'm gonna put some stuff back in the grave. He's got two windows already banished. He's got Elder Hawk. Not bad. Not a bad start, considering he bad aimed Pazur's entire turn away from him. Advantage time. He do kind of be that way. Hawk and Elder again, and he's got a, a Lara in hand now. It's not something you see every day. 
Ritual Beast, not only Ritual Beast, but Ritual Beast putting in work. So I've, I see them on ladder every once in a while. And like, whenever I see them half the time, somebody does a play and takes like five minutes and then they just surrender. And I'm like, huh? So to, to see it going off, like, wild. Do you top deck the Elder or Winda? Um, I'm not sure. A new horror awaits you. I special I'm, summon a monster. Oh, excuse me. I'm not 100% positive. All right, we got Ulti Apelio again. We got there. My monster and uh, pazur has got two back row, but is going to take the damage and go to 1,400. And now Architect really, really is in a position to tie this war up. Still turn three. Yes, it is turn three. Now pazur has got to do something or uh, or TL is, is going to be caught up. I mean, they're breathing down their neck at this point. Okay, he's got another Harpy Channeler. Attempting one more time to Harpy's Hunting Ground. <laughs> We saw how well it went last time. Oh, he's got a Kanadia. He's got a Kanadia. All these HHG hits just aren't helping. I mean, it forces Architect to use them, but... You, you would want to do that at a time... At the least ideal possible moment. Gosh, excuse me. It is it is late for me. It is the middle of... I'm usually asleep by like 10 or 11 a.m. Eastern. And it's 4 p.m. <laughs> So this is super late for me. My monster's effect activates. All right, Alti Apelio, we go and loop. Dejmery, let bad name turret channel. Monster. Yeah. My turn is over. Make your move. Also EU. Uh, no, I'm in America. Nah, I'm in the USA. <laughs> This is the middle of the this is the middle of the day in America. It's about 4 p.m. my time, but uh, I work nights. I work midnight to 8 a.m. So like usually my schedule is like work and then come home and sleep until like the evening. Alright, we're back into Alti Cannon Hawk. Let's go in America. Yes, Cannon Hawk, we looping. Poor Pizarre, man, has tried so hard to make plays here and just hasn't been able to do anything. I mean, literally nothing he could do differently. Like, <laughs> HHG is not a May. It's not like he's choosing to do this. It happens. And, like, there's, you know, why would you not go after your opponent's back row? Get on Swallow's Nest. <laughs> Yeah, he, I haven't seen one yet. He really, he's really needed it. It would help a lot. <laughs> it would put a stop to some of this. Because now he's sitting on three back row. And you know how hard it is to connect with a lot of back row against RB. Because they can just loop their way out of it. Then they just wiggly worm around it. And just keep going. The real egotist in back row. Gosh. He's starting to send them back too, man. That's so rough. Oh, he's going for malevolent. He's going for game. Is Architect going to risk it for the biscuit? Said, I don't care about your back row. He's doing it. Activate malevolent sin. Move the face down out of the way. Oh, there's a response. pazur has got something. Something he can do. Now's my chance. Okay. Alright. He's got a chalice. So he can negate uh he can negate the malevolence then. It beefs him up. Oh my god, he had an ambush down too. Yep, so summon a tamer and a spiritual beast. He's going to summon a Pelio and uh, the Elder. He definitely has Ambush. You are correct. ETH. Going to loop uh, Kanadia back to hand. 
Didn't draw a swallow, missed the ambush. Yep. Of all the cards the HHG could have hit, the middle one, the ambush, would have been the best one. Oh, and he's got a Pelio. Swing in, clear the way. Apelio swing direct. Nothing to stop him. We are tied up. Architect on a three-game win streak. And now it is tied six to six. Fool. Wow, that's crazy. Hey, Bellator, what's up, dude? Thank you for the follow. So, uh, TL and DF are tied. Six to six. They are toe to toe with the defending champions they said we don't care who you are we don't care you made it to playoffs how many times doesn't matter we're here to play but uh df still has two duelists left they still have mudkey and uh buns who i've seen both of and been able to cast both of so i know that df has still has some strong players on deck so this is far from over it ain't over. But they have reversed. They've clawed their way back. TL has climbed out of two deficits up to now. Which, again, when you're facing off against a team that's qualified playoffs every season since debut and are coming off a win, that's impressive in of itself. Like, you have to give props. Because they have, they have fought hard since the very beginning of this match. You know, they were three or four duels down. They could have easily just thrown up their hands and said, ah, forget it. I'm not going to beat these guys because they're too strong. But, uh, well, chat was asking for it. So, uh, yeah, Buns is coming up to the table next to try and finish off the Ritual Beasts that have so quickly taken control of this. Walked out of their own funeral. They rose up out of the coffin and said, nah, forget this. Stepped out, walked out, went to Dairy Queen. Now they're ready to win this war, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes things make sense in my head, and then I say them, and they don't make sense anymore. <laughs> but either way, I mean, you know, even even if they don't win a single duel from here on out, you, you have to give credit where credit is due. You know, I... Both matches that I've casted today have had freshman squads. First with Last Killer and now with the Legends. And they have both proven themselves. They they have shown that they belong here. You know, I think uh, Last Killer's had a really, really strong start. They already took a win off a Toon Squad. And, uh, you know, they've lost a couple now. But both of these teams, of, of the new teams so far, both of them have shown that uh, they, they can keep pace. You know, there's that, that's that is a concern when, when you're looking at a new team like this. It's kind of like, you know, you don't want to see them get blown out and turned off from the whole idea of competing because it's their first time out and they're trying to learn, you know. But uh, it's it's a little touch and go with with TL. They're learning as they go and they're they're keeping up. You know, I I don't know if I've seen Ritual Beast in Team Wars before or not. So this is one of those kind of moments where it's like. Hey, we're kind of new here. We're going to play whatever we got and what we're comfortable with. And Architect seems very comfortable piloting the deck. So, let's go. Uh, Buns is bringing out the Automats. Yeah, so we're back into Automatopia. Would not want to be you. We got a Gaga, got a sister. Going to grab a, uh, a bolt from deck. Seems good to me. Setting some back row, but no coat? No, no coat to be had. Stuck out in the cold with no coat, no gloves, nothing. All right. But three back row, though. That's, uh, that's uh, nothing, nothing to, to sneeze at, I will say. All right. So, uh, dumping the window first. Sure. Winda into sister, beat down. <laughs> Winda beat down. <laughs> and uh, Buzz is taking it, but the, the three back row? I mean, there's got to be something there. Yeah, this is not what I expected. <laughs> it's 
is not what I what I was uh, expecting to see when uh, when when Bun stepped up to the plate here. But I'm on a play. Reset the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems good. But only a single window. That's uh, woo. Wind Woman drop kicks child. Yikes. All right, so Gaga got ahead on the refresh. Now we're getting some rank six. So maybe an M7 to yeet Winda? Perhaps? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. And he gets to draw off of the head, of course. Zubaba Bomcho Gaga got coat. We haven't seen one yet. Oh, he's going to loop the head back. All right, bet. Yeah, pays the material, then just loops Gaga head right back in the hand. Sure. We take those. Why not? Okay. Still a couple more cards. Wait. Yeah, three face down, three cards in hand. We have no idea. The buns pass his turn. That's it. Stays on three back row and an M7. In interesting is one way to put it, yeah. Okay. So, Architect goes for the pedal fin. Maybe Buns is trying to rely on the back row for now. Wants to see if he can clear it out with back row without having to pop window, I guess. I don't know. It is one of those decks you can't approach normally, how you just, you know, go punchy-punchy on it. You really do have to kind of play strangely to be able to interact with it correctly. And, man, Ritual Beast is rough. Leave Wind on the field is a mistake. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it pays off. I mean, Architect has proven himself with the RBs. He's on a three win streak. Like, the only other player that has more wins than him right now is McMurphy. And that's only one more. Call for damage? I don't know. I can't say for sure. Alright, we're, uh, we're fusing. Into the, uh, into the Ultican Hawk. And, uh, yeah, he put the... <laughs> He put the M7 back, and the sister in the grave. I have seen a lot of really solid back row stuff from Automats, so I'm expecting this back row to be much of the same. Something nutty. Hmm. Oh, you can't really function with only one monster. Yeah, but it's 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 not just one monster. It's not just one. And he started to put things back in a bun's hand. A new horror awaits you. Goes into the ulti Apelio. Yeah. I set my car. Oh, and a couple back row too. Forbidden Lance loses 800. Yeah. Yeah, because this is exact lethal. But minus, uh, minus the 800 is enough to at least stay alive. But not by much. That Lance is, is keeping Buns alive. Okay, MST. To blow up the ambush. Nice hit. Very good hit. Finally, somebody hit the ambush. Okay, Dodo -do Draw next. Drawing some cards. I believe there's... Is there still an activation? Oh, he's got another MST. Yeah, oh no, Buns has used both on him on a place. So, yeah, the draw is the best he's got. Book of Moon down the Apelio? Okay. He'll break up the Apelio in response. Hmm. He's making some progress. Now we got double Winda. I'm, oh yeah, he looped head back. So he'll be able to make a few plays with it. Does Bun still have Bolt? Uh, I believe so. 
unless he put it back and I just didn't notice. Double sin? Uh, yeah, that would do it. Double malevolent? Does he run two of them? He does! He runs double malevolence in! Two spooder! He's going for the second one. Now he's just gonna yeet the windows out of the way and clear the way. The win streak is over! The two malevolent sins taking care of the RBs. I can't believe it. It took two malevolent sins to beat Ritual Beast. That's wild. Okay. Alright, sure. <laughs> Alright. Well, uh, you got there. Bud's easy, bruh. Bruh. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that is Architect's first loss here. And uh, that will put Diffusion back in the lead. Seven to six. So, are they going to repeat? Because TL still has one repeat left. They could do it just for memes if they really wanted to. If they wanted to repeat the Ritual Beasts that put them back on the map. Can't be. Oh, shoot, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. My bad. Yeah, unfortunately. That would be kind of wild. Sorry, again, it's like it's like 4 a.m. for me, not 4 p.m., so might be. Uh, this is what happens when you're like, yeah, I'll do two in a row, that's fine. And it's like, oh, wait. <laughs> this is when I sleep now. Uh, okay, uh, so yeah, 7 to 6. Monkey is the demo. You try streaming at 4 a.m. Let me know how it goes. I do two in a row as naps. I feel that. I feel that. Alright, so, uh, Architect showed us some RB stuff. Seems good. What else does he have? It wasn't exactly two in a row. It was, there was like an hour and a half or so between them, but, you know, then that's even later that I gotta stay up, so. Oh, we got Harpy, maybe? Onomat and Harpy? In his sister's pal, Lamau. Alright, let's go. We got, Oh, that's there. The thickness! The thickness! That's 30 card. Let's go. Alright, Buns is on the play this time. I wouldn't try to do it in the first place. Understandable. It ain't easy being cheesy. Okay. Let's go, sister first. Combining RBs with Harpy. I don't know, it could be trying, man. <laughs> I'm still waiting on one. A 30 card try mid. <laughs> Truly the most 12 head moment. 30 card Harpy is uh is kinda wild. They 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 do have the thickness. <laughs> try mid be the weirdest wildest shit, yeah? It would be a little nutty. Architect F2P, bruh. They have enough card. Not by themselves, no, not really. Unless you just put like a million staples in there. And pieces of paper only need one staple. Haha, ha, I'm funny. <laughs> Alright, Bun's going into the rank 6. Up to Bouncer. Well, we're looking normal here. We're not getting sideways yet. No more ritual beasts. The Harpy's hunting ground is gone. Bun's back row is safe for now. I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be Thunder Dragon on my. As much as I know you would want that, I don't. I don't think that's happening. All right, we got some back row, and that's it. No, that can't be all. That cannot be all. Ain't no way. Yo, Gynesis, thanks for the raid. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're, we're watching a pretty interesting one. Uh, 
This is a match between the uh, the defending champions from last season, uh, Defusion, and uh, the Legends, who are debuting this season, and it is seven to six, so it's a close one. Yo, Igor, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Thanks, everybody. All right, well, this is technically lethal, but back row. I mean, you know, yeah, treacherous trap hole. No, ain't no way. Hey, Preserve, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Welcome, GG's, my dude. Yo, Forbidden Lance, protect the bouncer? Seems good. TTH in 30 cards, smile. Oh, he's got a Karma Cut, too. Karma Cut using the channeler? Please. Please. Yo, Lord Ranger, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Uh, how many skill? I believe just one, maybe. Uh, let's see. On him on a play, turn one. Yeah, just one. Woo! Yo, Samuel Zaraki, thank you for the follow as well. It's card TTH later. He draw. He played TTH and Karma. <laughs> Just open TTH. Absolutely insane. I mean, <laughs> and Buns passes. Yo, Sneeze G. Thanks for the follow. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. Shout outs to Guy Assist, by the way. One of uh, one of many solid streamers and casters, whichever one we are. I don't even know anymore. With Team Wars. Thank you. Alright, hey, we got a coat. We got there. Monsters! Woo! Oh my god. Is that got more background than the RP? This is crazy. We've already seen TTH and Karma, and he's still got three back row. What is this? Yeah, this is a buttload of back row, man. It is all back row. I mean, hey, when when hate <laughs> hey when hatred eight is no longer existent, I mean, you can get away with these kind of plays. I'm curious if it's gonna pay off for them. Cause I mean, it's grindy, but they're trying to grind to stay in this fight. I mean, it's seven to six. They're up against the champions, the the reigning, defending, undisputed heavyweight season nine champions. They gotta do anything they can to stay in this. I understand. Stay focused, Zubaba. Don't worry about me. Zubaba, my God, I got Swinging in. Onomatopoeia taking the damage. Going to 700. And if Architect goes down, then that means uh, that uh, TL only has one player left. Gotta make something happen with 700 life. And three back row. And two in hand. Bro, where are the plays? Let's gotta have something. Alright, we got a uh, Harpy Lady 1. Are they really just three bluffs? I don't know. We could just be saving them until he absolutely needs them. I don't know. Swinging into Automatopoeia for 100. He discarded Chandler earlier. I don't know. Yeah, he tossed uh, he tossed Chandler to activate Karma Cut. I I'm not sure. I really don't know. I DK but brain. All right, Gaga Coats effect. Just bring him right back. All right. Oh, he's got a Dodo -do draw too. Architect has to do something. He's got to do something. Tax with Harpy Lady for 100 damage. That's some big damage right there. He's got double coat. I mean, that yeah, that's this is lethal. He's got to do something. One of those back row. Got to do something here. Slapping contest. This is more like they're throwing pebbles at each other. We have a delay. Architect continues to just slowly bleed out. 500 life left. Gagara Coat swinging in for lethal. For win number eight for Defusion. Triple back row. He's got to have something drowning one time. We've seen everything else. Whatever it is, you got to use it, man. 
It, it is use it or lose it, and it is your life. Karma cut. Okay, yeah, that's why he was the last. Oh, sw this card swallows nest off of karma cut. Okay. What is in this man's grave? He's got a Harpy Lady 1 and a Harpy Chandler. He might have a hysteric face down, maybe? I don't know. They can't all be bluffs. You're correct. Hey, there it is! The hysteric! Call me Esperoba. Alright, so, uh, yeah, he'll get a special summon Harpies from the grave. So, I, I suppose at the end of the day, he tossed a lot away, but uh, he knew that he was going to get him back eventually. But he doesn't have anything to toss for the uh, the Chandler effect. Mm. Still one back row left. So, I mean, he could... Is he going to synchro? I mean, I don't know what else you do. You kind of have to. Got to make something with these things. Yep. We're sinking. The synchro with, uh, with, with no tuners. Does the buds have automatic flight? No. I hope you're ready. I synchro summon a Wait. Hold on. Don't quote me on that. Let me look. I think so. Yeah, it looks like he still may have one left. He's got a book, too. Yeah, just book the Cyber Slash down. That works. 1,400 defense is, is no sweat for Onomat. Yeah, Cyber Slash still gets to go off. But at least he can get over fairly easily without too much hassle. But yeah, it, it looks like Bun still has an Onomat to play left as far as I can tell. I've scrolled through the log a couple times. Oh, and he's got a head, too. Yup. Yeah, Architect knows it's over. And uh, Bun's coming in 2-0. And uh, Architect is down and out. So that will leave uh, TL with one player left. That's going to be Flash Farden. Here you go. Let me just do that real quick. So TL uh, is is now on uh, the their last player eight to six in favor of Defusion. So they've uh, they've got they've got four wins. They gotta win. They gotta get four wins. Ah, uh, it's it's not impossible. It is not impossible. But four is a, is a tough one for sure. TL's come close twice today. They've gotten three wins on two different duelists, so not impossible, but dang, it's going to be tough. He had a nest. I hope I flipped one of his harpies. When I didn't, he had no plan B. Dang. Dang, dang, dang. All right, well, we, we, know, we know who it's down to now. We, uh, we know what's coming next. They've only got one player left. One, one duelist separating them from, uh, from another defeat. And of course, uh, li like I said, you know, they're, they're keeping up as much as they can. They're, they're doing everything they got. They pulled out, they pulled out some interesting stops. They pulled out a big old 30 card harpy and a ritual beast deck that, that put in some work. Did some damage. But now it is uh, it is all down to Flash, wherever Flash is. I don't know. <laughs> We're waiting. Trying to figure out where the last player is. Uh, yeah, they've only got one, so there's no there's no there's no huddle here. It's basically just gotta pray, hope for the best at this point. I don't know where uh, where Flash is, so stand by. We'll we'll be back in there soon, so. Hey, what's up, Kexai? Welcome to the stream. Hello. Yeah, so if you're just joining us, uh, this is a Team Wars Season 10 Week 3 match 
between Defusion, the Team Wars Season 9 champions, and uh, the Legends, who are a, a newcomer team to the league. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the war here. Uh, currently 8-6 to six in favor of Defusion. Uh, the Legends have, uh, have, have played, for the most part, I would say, about as well as they can. Um, trying to keep up and keep pace with DF. And, uh, hold on. We, we, may, we may have a, a, a penalty here. Hey? <laughs> I think somebody's in the duel room that shouldn't be. And, uh, not sure. Hold on. I'll, I, will, I will get confirmation somewhere. Okay. We must do Here goes. My turn. All right, so it looks like we have a mirror automat and automat. You know them, you love them. They're here to stay until that skill gets changed cuz they can just play whatever they want in the extra deck. So, automata play right off the bat from Buns on a two win streak now with the automats and looking to continue it. Ga 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 sister to search for the bolt. To Yuma, it's double, double vision. Oh, it was, oh shoot, I'm sorry, hold up. My bad. I clicked it and I must have missed, I didn't, I didn't actually click on it. All right, we got it. This is better than watching it, XD. Sorry. Again, it's like, it's like the middle of the night for me. I've, I'm tired. This is the second one I've done today. <laughs> You can tell. You can tell. I'm trying to get confirmation on the on the penalty thing. Alright, so uh Flash plays his own Gaga sister. Let's go. Searching the bolt. Hmm, this looks familiar. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, so uh Hey, we do have a coat though. Buns is out in the cold, but uh Flash got his coat at least, so hey. We take those. No problem. Okay, never mind. It's it's eight to six. We're good. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Rank six time. Two back row, man. The uh, the automat back row has been super nasty. I've seen a lot of it lately, and it has been just absolutely disgusting. Buns loose so we can see TG. All right, uh, Bouncer's up. That's good. That's uh, that's that's good for TL. You need you need that boy. That boy important. Oh wow, we got two back row, two back row. Sure. Book down the Bouncer. Oh, all right, that's fair. Bang. Went all the way up to Bouncer and just for him to get bounced face down. Yeah, dude, some sometimes those those puns land and sometimes they don't. Need buns to 4 to save my fantasy. Fair. Fair enough. Yo, you got buns on fantasy? Seems like a good choice. Been uh, piloting these automats very smooth. TG Halbun's cannon. <laughs> I would love to see Halberd cannon. I pop off for Halberd cannon every time. A caked Halberd. <laughs> what? Can see that next week. <laughs> hmm. Well, this is a this is kind of rough. I mean, yeah, Bouncer's face down, but if you don't have anything big enough to punch over it, he's coming back next turn. And Buns has used one on him on a play. He's got another one, so I mean, yeah, there you go. Gonna swap out the bolt for uh, Utopic. 
But now he's also up against Flash as back row, too. Oh, he's gonna... Yeah, he's gonna Utopic uh, for the Dodo -do -do draw. Sure. Seems good. Bun's the TG player. YOLO. He yeeted it. Oh, no, and it didn't pay off. I mean, the, the back row may keep him alive, but... I was expecting him to get a monster or something out of that. He tossed... Utopic for that? Oh no. He said it's fine, I don't even care. One's out of skill. Let me double check. I believe so. Activates on him on a play. Yeah, Buns has used the skill. Sister control. Is literally only Gaga -ga sister. And triple back row. Bolt and drawn head. Yeah, it's that's that's rough. That is, that is tough for sure. Here comes Utopic All right, Flash is tossing out the Utopic, and then he's got a bouncer face down that he can flip back up. Got booked. Oh, and he's got a coat too. We got a rank four and a rank six. Yikes! So yeah, summon the the coat from hand. Let's go. This is not good. This is not it. You don't need to rely on that back row because Flash is swinging all out now. Stay focused, Yuma. Okay, no rank four. He's just going to stick with the couple of big bodies. All right, Utopic into Gaga, sister, and uh, hey, Kanadia. This is going to Kanadia down the, uh, the bouncer. Sure. All right, so we know Buns has a... A Kanadia ready to defend with. There's another delay in there, so Bun still has something in the back row that's usable. But uh, opts to take the 1800 and uh, just go along with it. So that's all from Flash for now. We're, we're back over to Buns. Two back row and a top deck. And a set and pass. Nothing else to play with. We uh, there's a there's a Kanadia in Bunz's grave and then three back row and that's it. That is all that's keeping him alive. Do 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 draw. It's I don't I don't know if it's over necessarily, but it's it's there is a very strict time limit. There's only so much Bunz can do, and Flash has an MST. Looking to dig into the back row and see if he can take something out. Far right. What's it going to be? Oh, he hits Bunz's own MST. So now Bunz is going to blow up something on Flash's board. Hits the middle, and I think that was a do, -do, -do draw. Oh, no, it was a book. Sad, bruh. Pop the book of boo. Dang. Drowning. We saw some insane Drowning Mirror Force in Cyber Dragon in the first war I casted today. So, I mean, it's... It, I Who knows? Anything is on the table. We saw Ritual Beast win streak. Three wins. I mean... At this point, I'm not discounting anything. Alright, we're going to attacks. Bouncer swinging in, lethal damage, gets fiendish chained, stuck in place, and now Buns is down to one card left. Has a Kanadia, so yeah, got a, got a cannon fodder at this point. So, uh, the Kanadia plus one back row, whatever it is. We living, though. We are living. All right, Gaga Coat, 1,800 coming in. Buns may take this. I'm not sure. Taking it. That's a lot of damage. 400 life left. For some reason. All right. Top deck. What is it going to be? Go, 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 glove. Oh, no. Needs head bad. <laughs> Sounds like one of those Dark Souls memes. Battle, he says. 
I waddle for battle. Swings into Bowser. Yup. Dang. Alright. Buns is taking the loss here. And uh, TL is going up to seven. So Flash gets win number one. Three more <laughs> wins if they wanna if they wanna bring this thing home. And now uh, I believe maybe TG Ripshaw's fantasy. I was about to say rest in peace fantasy bracket, rip or roster whatever. <laughs> Words are hard, man. But you have to you have to produce. Four and one still good. Just win, buns. Four and one solid for sure. Four and one is is is. Good enough. More than good enough. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Buns deck number two. It's supposedly, maybe TG. How's two and two? Ah, two and two kind of gross. Two and two do be kind of nasty. Alright, let's see it. Let's see it. He's got the Antenomy profile pick. Don't disappoint. Chat is waiting for it. Oh, hold up. Hold up. We got uh, Yami. No TG. Unless somehow he's just playing Destiny Draw TG, which I don't know how you do that, but sure. <laughs> now Buns loses, bro. All right, Flash is on the play on this one. You know, this is crunch time. They've only got two losses. This is when you want your deck firing off like a well-oiled machine. No bricks, no weirdness, just straight up plays. That's all you want. But so far, it's looking that way. Gaga's sister seems normal. On him on a play, he's got Utopic on him on a PA. He may make uh, rank six, rank four. Perhaps? Oh no, he's gonna do da 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 Yup. Ga 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 coat. Oh yeah, he is gonna do it, isn't he? Yeah, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do the six and four, maybe. Yep, Gaga sister has another effect. Make him level six. Okay, he's going for Bouncer on this one. Which is fine. Uh, Buns is running 22 cards. So... No idea what this is. Could be TD, could be Gaia, who knows. What do we got? We got Gaia! We got Gateway to Chaos! Alright, Search of the Magical Knight. So we definitely have fusions. It's gonna happen. Maybe. He's gonna have to get around that Bouncer and a Book of Moon! Would do him some good. So now the Bouncer Negate is out of the question. Dragon Knight's path to swap out to Galloping Gaia Field Spell. Yeah, Buns is in decent shape here. Good start. Flash had a decent opening too, just the book the book hurts. Cause if he still had access to that uh that bouncer, it would be solid. But unfortunately, uh, that's that's not how the cookie crumbled here. All right, Magical Knight. Oh, he's got a fiendish chain in the back row ready for him. Ready to stop the Magical Knight. And now Buns is going to have to rely on back row again. Yeah, no second book. And unfortunately, that Magical Knight is frozen in place. He's still got two back row. Bun still has uh, some layer of protection here, so it's uh, it's not over. Just depends on what what Flash is drawn into, what he's holding on to. If he's got anything he can do to improve his board state here, he's still got a, a two material bouncer, which is perfect. It's totally fine. He's got a coat, so he could try to make a rank four, depending on if he's got one in hand. I think he's still got an autumn on a play left, too. Yeah, this is only turn three, so. Yeah, he could autumn on a play again. And yeah, that's what he's gonna do. 
Use that skill one more time. Get some mileage. Oh, yeah, he's got a glove in hand. Yeah, swap that out. Uh, it's it's hard to pick what helps the most here because, you know, you're, you're up against not just the monster in the front row that you got to get past, but you're also fighting against two cards in the back that you have no idea what they are. All right. Bounds are back up. I was about to say, this bun just kind of book him right back down. All right, coat one more time. He's got double coat now. He's he's layered up. Layers, dude. That's how you survive the winter. Double TTH. That would be kind of insane. Would be nutty, I will say. All right, Malevolent Sin, he's just going to hes gonna say, I don't care what the back row is, I'm going for the win right now. This is this is to tie it up, to take it to the last duelist on uh, DF's side, too. So there's there's a lot riding on this. They can, they can tie it up right here. It's all at the back row. Malevolent Sin gets in, powers up, and a bouncer is stopped by the Fiendish Chain. Buns responds with his own chain. And uh, one back row is still remaining. He's still got Galloping Gaia up on the board. So he could easily get what he needs to fuse. He can make it happen. Yeah, he's doing it. Reveal level 5. He's got Curse of Dragonfire. And he's going to go grab a Gaia. So yeah, I was about to say, Magical Knight. He needs this Magical Knight to get through, though. If Flash has another way to shut it down, it's gonna be it's gonna be real trouble. Guy, the Magical Knight's effect to summon the dragon, he goes off, but Bouncer's still up. Oh, he's got the Kanadia to flip the dragon down. He's flipping Curse of Dragonfire face down, and now uh, no effect, and that's a pass turn from Buns. 1600 life left not uh not enough damage to get through and kill here the best he could do is like 400 rank seven i'm kind of surprised he didn't make any but i don't know all right what do we got mst oh is he gonna free the bouncer or is he gonna go after the other back row or he could go for the field spell he's got options here they all they all have a little bit of merit to them in different ways give yourself back one of your attackers try and stop buns from making a play next turn that's what he's going for he's going for galloping gaia takes out the field spell and a, a ton of those gaia decks only play one so that's uh that's what he's working with and uh, Sin is going to swing at the Curse of Dragonfire that he flipped face down. But there's a pause here. Bonds is going to let him do it. That's, that malevolent Sin is a little big. <laughs> He's getting a little huge. Alright. Buns is up one more time. He's got two Magical Knights completely free to do whatever he needs. Hey, Eli Lima, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Hello. More TW. Yes, I do a lot of Team Wars matches. This is my second one today. Oh, he's going to tribute into the Curse of Dragonfire. And the Bouncer is still locked down. There's nothing Flash can do. He's got to take this guy a hit. But he's not big enough to punch over anything. Oh, he's got Dragon's Mirror. Dragon's Mirror. He's going to double fuse. Dang. We're fusing twice. I'm assuming this is going to be our Sky Galloping. Yes, it is. Uh, wait, he didn't go for the feet or the the continuous spell. Does he not have it? Does he not have it? Wow, what? 
does he seriously not run it? Because, I mean, if it was in his back row, he would have just flipped it. Some players don't use it. That's crazy. Oh, and he's got Gaga -ga head. Flash has the head. The recovery. He's targeting Gaga's -ga sister. Oh, for the fiendish chain again. Buns chaining up Flash's entire board. Stopping the head from going off. Dang, a nice fiendish chain. That was way too close. All right, so he's stuck on uh, on a Kanadi on defense and a head that's an attack. Magical Knight of Dragons and a Sky Galloping Gaia and a, one more back row. Buds only has one slot open now. And yeah, that'll uh, that'll clear Flash's board out. And uh, that is a huge Magical Knight. Absolutely massive. TTH. Oh my god, I'll lose it. So no head? Yeah, no. No head. Alright, Flash is going for the draws. Obviously, he is, he is go the onomata play procs are gone now. He has no onomata play left. So he is completely at the mercy of his deck at this point. Set two and pass. You know Gaia can kill those. Yeah, they're going to get blown up. He loses the lance, and this is uh, this is this is game point here. And Buns may take defusion to nine wins. Flash has one back row. I see no delay on that. There's no delay. Buns picks up his third win and defusion's ninth as a team, and they are now at match point. One more win to seal the deal. That's all they need. One win left. All right. So this is it. The the last deck that the legends have. One last pile of cards. Let's go. And I think they're going to repeat here. I believe wait, can they? No, wait. No, 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 no. Flash won already, right? Hold up. Just a second. Just secondly. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think you can repeat here. Because <laughs> Flash already won. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Making sure my math is correct. Two, five, nine. Two, four, six, seven. Okay. Yeah, you cannot repeat here. I was about to say... Architect called for it immediately. He said, repeat. I said, bruh. <laughs> Your repeat's gone. It's locked out. Because you won already with this. So, yeah, it's this is it. This is the last one you got left. Whatever Flash has is, uh, is it. Man. Man, oh, man. We're, we're at the end here. I mean, a 10 to 7... Is is not a is not a blowout, especially considering again, first time first season team up against three time playoff qualifier, one championship winning team. I mean, it's hard to be disappointed. It's really hard to be disappointed. But we are uh, we we are. We are on the on the match point here. If you're just joining us, uh, Defusion is one win away from taking the war home, and uh, that will be a three and O record for them if they win this. They'll still be undefeated so far this season, and they have they haven't lost since uh, since playoffs of last season. Okay, let's go. This is it. It is, it is, as they say, do or die. One deck left. What does Flash have? The the final secret weapon the Legends can pull out right now. It looks like they're pulling out their own Gaia deck. Yeah, it looks like Flash is going to play Gaia too. Uh, so I think we've got a mirror, unless it's some Exodia thing, which no Grandpa's cards. 
Get the microwaves out. Conspiracy time. All right, so this is it. Uh, match point. Buns on the blue side playing for Defusion for the win. And uh, Flash for the Legends on the red side. Trying to keep the dream alive of a, of a massive upset. And it would be a massive upset. Alright, what do we got? We got uh, Galloping Gaia right off the bat. Okay, adding the Curse of Dragonfire, so we're, we're fusing. Check this out. I summon a monster in Again, I don't know how you would hard brick this Gaia that hard. Be kind of tough. He's got all the leeway he needs to, to summon and to fuse and to set himself up. So, yeah, seems good. Alright, Gaia the Magical Knight of Dragons. We got some we got some targeted destruction on the board. Ooh, and he's got two back row set too. Nice. That's uh that's that's good for Flash. That means that uh Bun's gonna have to play through some stuff here. He's gonna have to play through a destruction and whatever else is in that back row. Oh, he's got a Forbidden Chalice negate the Magical Knight's effects. Yeah, Chalice would be the play. Wait, the crazy thing is, is that he can now get over Magical Knight. So he can just punch over it. He doesn't care. Magical Knight beats Magical Knight of Dragons. <laughs> Guy had best tech with Defusion. Yeah, I was about to say, the irony of Defusion winning the war, finishing the war off with a Fusion deck. Pretty good. Now Buns is going to drop back row of his own. Trading back row. Trading fusions. I don't know what Flash has. If he's got a way to reset Gaia's attack points. It would be really nice to pop something at the end of turn. Time to battle. But no. Here we go. I attack with a monster. Okay, Magical Knight, swinging in for 100 damage. Mm. Oh, he's going to beef up his own knight. Chalice his own monster to make it strong enough to kill. Unfortunately, will not gain the attack because it negates. Would have been absolutely wild if it went off. So now it's uh, it's two back row is all Flash has to fight against. Oh, and he topped the Dragon's Mirror. Okay. That's not bad. So we're fusing into another Magical Knight of Dragons. Okay. Hmm, he's got the Kanadia. Well, he could always uh, activate, right? He should be able to. Yeah, I was about to say, he should be able to activate it on the way down to blow up Bunz's last back row. And it's a dragon's... He said a dragon's mirror. So, yeah, he's going to take 26 here. And uh, drops down to 11. No field spell up at the moment. This is, this is trouble. This is trouble. But he's got Dragonite's Path. And uh, Flash, at present, has one targeted destruction on the board that would put him down to zero attack. So, I mean, he could do it at the at the best possible time to stop the play. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to Magical Knight. But does Buns have the guy of the Magical Knight in hand? No, he doesn't. Set one and pass. Uh-oh. Uh oh. And of course, that means Gaia will go down to zero attack, but he's still got one here. And I have no idea. He could top deck something. Ooh, galloping, yeah? Soldier Gaia to reveal a dragon type monster? He couldn't do Dark Flare, he can't summon it. Not a not a bad place to be at all. Yeah, we're almost three hours into this war. This is this has been a pretty long one, all things considered.
Yeah, he's got a soldier Gaia in hand. I mean... There's stuff that Flash can do to win this thing right now. And that would keep TL alive and bring him up to 9 and 8. He might be able to do it. Oh, he's got a magical Knight of Dragons to kill the back row. <clears throat> it's a fiendish chain! And he's got Soldier Gaia in hand! Is that it? That's it! We know he's got it, right? He didn't put it back unless I'm absolute ape and just didn't realize it. Yeah, no, he's doing it. Oh, he's gonna just hard summon? Okay. Yeah. Sure. That's enough. That's all you need. 2K, that's it? Flash takes out Buns in the mirror. I'll never forget you, my friend. Never. I'm sorry, should have done this too. Yeah, uh Legends is going up. They're going up to uh to eight. Nine to eight. We are almost at a game nineteen. And this is now officially the most duels that Legends have won in a match. Their first week match against Phoenix, they won three duels. Their last week match against X and O, they won seven. And now they've won eight. So again, week over week, they have been approving. Approving. Improving as a squad. Every week, they've gotten better. Now the question is, is this the week that they go all the way and get their first win in Team Wars? Or can Defusion close it out? They've got uh, Mudkey as the last one left. That's all they have left standing. Mudkey versus Flash at the very end. And again, this is still match point for Defusion. If, if Mudkey wins, it's over. But Flash has got to win two duels to turn this thing around. It's gonna be close. Alright, we're back in. Yugi versus Yugi. Let's go. Are we are we Gaia versus Gaia again? 20 cards, I think it might be. And Mudkey's on the play here, so uh, we'll find out pretty quick. I think, unless it's just Hard Brick City, which is not good. You cannot have that right now. All right, Dragon Knight's Path. We have another Gaia Mirror. So we know at least Mudkey's playing a Gaia deck and something else that we don't know yet. <clears throat> a heck of a close war. Three hours, and we've we've come to, to uh, game 18 now. So again, it's 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 super impressive. You know, not everything has gone their way. Not every play that TL has made has been maybe the best. Or they've had some issues. They've had, you know, deck problems, things like that. But they're still here. They're, they're eight wins now. All right. So, uh, yeah, Mudkey's gonna going to be on the play here, which is going to cause problems for Flash, for sure. It's going to be tough. It may be tough to play through this. I don't know. I mean, a Book of Moon or something would, would be perfect. Because it's just Guy of the Magical Knight of Dragons and a back row. That's it. That's all he's staring down. Hmm. Well. At this point... I think the the biggest thing that needs attention is is the magical knight because no matter what flash is not going to be able to fuse there's no way he's doing it magical knight maybe he's got a chalice oh man a fiendish chain right off the bat that's tough Oh, there's a delay. I thought maybe Flash had some kind of lance or something. Fiendish Chain negates the Magical Knight. That really sucks. That's going to be an issue. So now he's chained down and he's got he's still got a Magical Knight of Dragons staring him down. 
Mudkey came in, man. He came in with a chain right off the bat. So Flesh may not die straight away. If he can sit on two back row, I mean, he could just as easily chain Mudkey's uh, fusion monster back. Oh, man, at the end of, or at the, at the, still in the middle of his turn, hits Void Trap Hole. Oh, that definitely would have helped. Hey, Large Dogberry69, amazing name, and thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Galloping Gaia, one more time. Reveal a Gaia at hand, we're going for a dragon. Is it going to be, uh... Very useless, just chain. Ah! Especially when a monster of 2,000 more attack, negate one of those monsters of 2,000 more attack, destroy it. I don't know, that seems alright. Depends on what Mudkey can do this turn. He's got a zero attack, magical knight of dragons. So I'm assuming, uh, okay, he's got a Dark Flare in hand. He's going to go for the fusion here. Will Flash let him do it? Chain effect, you're only 2,000 back. Ah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I guess it could ward off a Sky Galloping. Since they can't <laughs> unbuff themselves. Hmm. All right, what do we got? We're fusing one more time. He's letting him go into another Magical Knight of Dragons. There's not much Flash can do, but one of them's at zero, so really, Mudkey only has one attacker. I mean... Oh, wait, he's got Dark Flare. I forgot. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, Flash doesn't die here. Can avoid Curse of Dragon still. Yeah, you, you definitely can. There are a few. There are a few. Top should have clicked battle phase instead of end phase. Mm. Dark Flare direct. I see no delay on that. Back over to Flash. 1,300 life points away from victory for defusion. They just need one more solid hit in there. Runs void for Luna Fusion, bruh. <laughs> Flash still has three cards in hand, and there's no back row on Mudkey's board, but he's looking at a 5,200 Gaia. Dragon Knight's path. He need he needs book or something. He's got he's got to get rid of that magical knight. My field spell activates. All right, galloping Gaia. But uh, chain maybe. All right, so he's looking for the Gaia this time. I yeah. He's got to flip it down. A chalice, book, anything. He's got three cards he can play with here. He's got to have something. No, the chain's gonna resolve. The field spell's gone. Unless it was a bluff. But he's got another face down. I mean, I, I don't know what saves him here. I have no idea what he's got left in terms of back row. This is Mudkey's duel to win. He's got two monsters that are lethal all by themselves. So, the final battle phase. Dark Flare swinging in. Direct attack. No response from Flash. And that is it. The one duel he was needed. And he delivered. Mudkey takes it. Game number 10 for Defusion. And that, uh, my friends, is uh, is all she wrote. So, uh, that is, that's it. That is the war. Game set and match. Defusion takes it and advances their record on the season to 3-0. Continuing this absolute dominant streak they've shown, obviously, since playoffs last season, since they are the reigning champion, continuing to now, they're on an absolute tear. So, uh, but again, like I've said throughout this whole war, you cannot discredit what TL was able to accomplish in this thing. They, uh, they, these two new squads that I've, I've been very fortunate enough to be able to cast for today have proven they belong here. Like I said, they started off, they had a real rough start. 10-3 loss against Phoenix. Then last week, TL played against X and O. They lost 10-7. Now they've lost 10-8. So every week they've improved, little by little. And that is probably the most important thing in your freshman season. So, 
uh, yeah, they uh, they fall to zero and three, but obviously they are they are learning, they are improving, and uh, as a squad, they uh, will continue to do the same. I expect to see a lot from them in the future. To already be keeping pace with the reigning defending champions is uh, is impressive in of itself. So, yeah, very very good games to both sides. Well played. Uh, we got to see some pretty nice stuff, and uh, yeah, that is uh, always a blast. So. Thank you guys so much for sharing this with me. Thanks to everybody that raided. I really appreciate it. It was a really solid war with two amazing teams. And I'm glad that uh, you were here to share it with me. So, And of course, as always, uh, huge shout outs to uh, the Team War staff and the admins and everybody who makes this league possible. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have these amazing premiere events like this that, in my opinion, far outclass uh, anything that we get officially in game. So, yeah. Please don't forget to thank your uh, your Team War staff and be kind to them um, because, yeah, they're they're killing it every day. So, And, uh, yeah, um, thank you very much for supporting Team Wars and for watching these matches. Um, you know, obviously, the league competing by itself would be great, but it is, it is amazing to have people who are passionate about the game's competition and all that. So uh, thank you to both teams for having me as your host for this match. I've been Diatonic. Uh, be sure to leave a follow on the channel. I cast tons of competitive duel links. It's kind of my gig. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Nate, Nathax, for the follow. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah. Uh, for everyone at Team Wars, thank you very much for watching. This has been Defusion versus the Legends. Defusion walking away now. Their record 3-0. and And the Legends still searching for their very first win. 0-3. But uh, they have improved greatly. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to big things throughout the season from both of them. And BDX, thank you for the fall as well. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. That's all for this war, and I will see you all next week in Team Wars Season 10, Week 4. Thanks.